How, how's it going? Well, I should wait a, a few minutes. Sometimes I forget free rolls exist on Twitch. But I'm here. All right, let's give it a minute. I'll be right back. This community is so funny. I, I this is I love this place, and I'll tell you a couple of reasons why. First of all, um, everybody in here is so is so excited, not for sorcery, not for any announcements. The most exciting thing is me taking a bite out of a BLT. It's like, this is a huge deal. Oh, BLT, let's go. No way. Is he going to eat a BLT? It, tons of streamers eat food every day on stream. In fact, there's probably, right now, there's probably five to 10,000 different streamers right now across the whole website eating food right now. I actually haven't had a BLT in a long time, but uh, we're not doing that immediately. I want to wait till uh, wait till a little bit later. We need to wait till the most people are here. Is it a turkey BLT? Nope. It's just red, a little coating of mayonnaise, lettuce, tomato, bacon, toasted. Well, hmm, let's not get let's not get crazy here. Let's not get crazy. What do you mean mayo with question marks? You, you eat dry ass BLTs? Who does that? You just put lettuce, tomato, and bacon in between bread? Where's the... That's dry. But, but the tomato... Yeah, mayo is always on a BLT. Always. I don't want that dry bread. But yeah, let's go over it. Let's talk about some stuff. Today is a very eventful day. Not just the fact that we're starting Sorcery Part 4. So yes, so people thought I was a liar. We're doing Sorcery 4. Today, we're going to start it. We're also going to talk about Grotto Beasts. And the Grotto Beasts Tabletop Simulator mod. I have some photos to show you. It's really, really, really nice some news about that. Also something else to talk about. You'll see. And then of course, the bacon, lettuce, tomato, and mayo sandwich. We know what it is. I don't think you do. <laughs> I talked in, in free stream today. That That is not what this is. This is different, and I think it's going to surprise a lot of people. People, I, I think a lot of you might know what like this thing is, but it's not what we were talking about in free stream. It's something else. <laughs> I'm already shocked. How many bites am I going to take? I don't know. A few. I, I might eat the whole sandwich. I don't know. Eat an egg salad sandwich instead. Stop stalling. I think we have to stall today. Because the Sorcery Council, I need to make sure they're here. The whole thing. I might eat half and save half for later or something. You should raid somebody right now. To start turning my streams on to raid people. Hey, welcome to the stream, everybody. Big day today. Okay, who are we raiding? I actually want to do that at some point. Hey, the shit we were talking about in free stream today, I'm gonna to do that. I'm gonna do that shit. It's gonna ha I'm gonna do that. Hope you're ready.
unfortunately, for the Sorcery High Council. But wait, somebody somebody on the Sorcery High Council is, is at work right now? Uh-oh. Well, how many people are on this council? We, we talk about the Sorcery High Council. I feel like it's like 2,000 people. It's, a, it's at least a few thousand people. How are we ever going to get anything done? If there's like 5,000 of us that need to be present for every single vote that we do for the for the, the, the Sorcery High Council, how do we do anything? <laughs> you have to be like present in the room. There's like 15... Imagine if there was like 15,000 senators. Everybody must be in attendance when we take these votes. This stadium full of people all screaming at each other. <laughs> oh, they do. No, that's they do that in Star Wars. Is that that looks like okay? That's Star Wars. Oh, that's right. I forgot about. The Galactic Senate. It's a Star Wars Senate, yeah. <laughs> so I I forget what happens in Star Wars. How did um <laughs> I was just called him fucking Senator Pompadour? What's his name? Why do I it's Pal Palpatine? I am the Senate. Did he just get to say and do whatever he want? Like, how did that work? How did that work? There were like 20,000 people in that room. How did he... What do you mean spoilers? Guys, Star Wars spoilers are... They're ingrained in human society. Humanity. They're a, Star, a Star Wars original trilogy spoiler is like... That's like saying that, that Gollum is in Lord of the Rings. They gave him emergency powers. Oh, right. These, those are the prequels. Uh, oh, I never saw those. I never saw those ones. I just saw like six or seven YouTube shorts of like uh, the, I think Empire Strikes Back. I've never even seen the movies. I have no idea how it even happens. Of course you watch shorts. Uh, can I talk about shorts for a second? I, 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 when I scroll YouTube shorts, I do it for a few minutes, or even, like, it doesn't matter. I, like, if I do YouTube shorts for a little while, I just kind of sit there and I'm like, I, I have to do something else. Like, I have to I have to clean my mind. Like, it's just, it's sometimes it's just chaos over there. It's just chaos. If, if I scroll shorts for, like, 30, 40 minutes, that's a lot, right? And it's like, holy shit, how long have I been doing this for? Now, let me tell you, I've only done this maybe three or four times ever. Maybe four times ever. Who scrolls for 40 <laughs> minutes? I don't know. I don't know how it works. I don't know. How am I, when am I supposed to stop scrolling? When am I supposed to stop? Just watch TikTok instead. I don't want, I don't want to watch either one of them. I mean, some of them are cool. Like, I, I, you know, you go through, you're like, whoa, holy shit. I can't fucking believe that bottle made it all the way down and didn't break. That's fucking unbelievable. <laughs> he watches the bottle ones. YouTube shorts are fucking insane. Yeah. So, like, Subway Surfers, Sludge. <laughs> I don't, dude, I don't know anything about it. All I know is the few times I've done it, I've gone, 
All right, that was all right. I'm uh, I'm I'm good for a, while, a little while. Yeah, I've seen I've seen the entire uh, Skibbity toilet. I've seen all of them except for the last. Like, um, I gotta catch up. Is it bad that I've seen all of Skibbity toilet, but I stopped watching Better Call Saul at season two? I don't know why I do these things. It's just like I don't know. <laughs> it's bad, but whatever. It's okay. If the entirety of, of Skibbity Toilet is, what, like third, 20 total minutes, 30 minutes? What is Skibbity Toilet? I don't know. I don't know. I just I just was on one and it was like, Skibbity da da. And I'm like, okay, just go to the next one. Go, go, go. 40 minutes later, that, that's how what happened. That's what happened. I just lost respect for you. Yeah. I'm dying right now. You need to grow up. Oh, a grown ass man. Oh, fucking grown ass man. I don't even know. I, maybe I haven't seen it all. It's hard to tell. Bro, you're 40. I don't know how these. I don't. I'm not like a shorts guy. I don't. I'm. Look, I want to maybe get back into YouTube. Talk about that another time. But I don't know. Maybe. Maybe do. Uh, should I make some shorts or something? Maybe I can make some fun ones. I don't know. Remember, you're 40? Not yet, almost. When was the last time you saw an entire TV show? All right. I have to, we have to, I, gotta, I know I'm stalling, but mods, can we do a poll, please, and answer this truthfully? Because I know people are going, oh my God, dude, what the, you can't believe you fucking watched that. How did you, are you really, you watched Skibbity Toilet? How, how many of you have seen it? How many of you have seen it? Like, I, I want like a real answer. Of, have, you, have you seen at least 10 of them? Yeah, and I want it to be answered truthfully. <laughs> Maybe I... Okay. I think I watched the whole thing a while ago when there weren't the amount of episodes that exist now. It takes like three minutes. Yeah. All right. Did you... Did you... And I, I want real answers. And don't you lie. I know some of you are gonna. All right, we got a 20% yes, which means it's more like 40% yes. The other 20% that are not voting yes, you're in the same room with somebody that's like, oh yeah, give me toilet, fucking. What? Yeah, I'm voting no. And you are like, yeah, me too. Yeah, it's at least 30% of you. Whatever, whatever. I watched it. I watched some of it. Whatever. Who cares? We're good. Twenty percent means twenty percent. It only means no. It means like thirty percent. A forty-four of asking you for a nun cosplay. I saw a, a like a trailer or like an image for like there's like there's another there's another like evil nun movie. This October, the nun. Hey, remember that movie with the nun? Fucking evil nun. We're we're really leaning into the evil nun. The Nun 2. It's a really, it's a really old trope. No, like the evil nun. <laughs> Watch the new Saw trailer? No, I don't. Yeah, I watched Skibbity Toilet because I was I was curious because I heard people talking about it. I was like, what is this? And then I watched it for a little bit and I stopped. I was like, okay, well, I'm done. Let's... Vinny fought you in Rivals of Aether yesterday. You won. Thank you. What's the lore? I, I don't know. Stop trying to justify it. Yeah, you know what? I don't even I don't even need to justify it. I did it. I watched it. 
Do I need to justify the fact that I watched this? Didn't Vinny watch this too? Wait, Vinny, did Vinny watch this too, didn't he? See, that's where I got the idea. That's where I got the that's where I got the idea. That's where I got the idea. I heard he was doing it. And I was like, oh, I guess I'll watch this too. Anyways, he's blaming Vinny. Don't you blame Vinny. Ludwig watched it. Ludwig watched it too. Hey. I'm gonna blame other streamers for this. It's not, I didn't, it's not me. I watched other streamers do it and I thought I was gonna do it too. It's not my fault. What he said, fuck this guy. <laughs> All right, I don't, I don't know the lore. I don't care. I don't need to, we're just gonna move on because that's what we're doing, playing sorcery. There's lore? I, yeah, I think so. I don't know. Do the voice, which, what voice? What are you talking about? The High Council has voted for you to move on. Uh, well, as, uh, as the Senator, the King Senator. I wanted to talk for a few minutes before we went. So, all right, let's go. Sorcery part four. We have a lot of stuff to talk about later. I, I'm going to wait till a little bit later, though. Uh, sorcery enjoyers. Let's go. Okay. So this is going to this is going to catch us up a little bit. Long ago, or so they say, the ancient world was prosperous and free. From the Kakabad Sea to the lake, to Lake Lumle. Harvests were plentiful. People were happy. All was at peace. I may have been sitting at this screen for too long for the music to have played a few times and no longer is playing. So, okay. All was at peace. Even the thundering skies were calm, tamed by the arts of the sorcerers of Mampang. Then everything changed. A fearsome sorcerer leveled the cities and turned the fields to dust with towers of devastating light. He heard no plea. Cutting down village after village, the mages scrabbled to defend the ancient world, but they were weak. Finally, the last archmage sealed the walls of Mampang and sent out seven deadly serpents to keep the dark sorcerer away. All seven died. And now here you are, climbing the narrow pass into the mountains of High Zaman. The price of your journey across the backlands has already been paid. Now, the Anoland is coming to Mampang, and nothing will be allowed to stand in his path. The crown will be yours. Ladies and gentlemen, Inkle <laughs> Steve, Steve Jackson's sorcery. Part four. Crown of Kings. Hey, there's the audio. Okay. So here we to give you a recap. Uh, we beat the Seven Serpents. We now are going for the Archmage. The Archmage is the the evil, evil Archmage. Where's the music? It'll it'll come up. There's no sound. Yeah, there is. All right, here we are. The sun begins to dip, heading towards the horizon. You climb an ancient staircase, worn to almost nothing by the years. Look at the steps. Long ago, these steps were etched with messages, warnings, and words of advice and succor to the acolytes making the pilgrimage to the fortress. But they have long since been scrubbed away by dust, and the remaining marks tell you nothing. Check my provisions. You open your pack to check your provisions and nod with satisfaction. 
You have enough for four meals, but that should be enough. If you have not found the crown within four days, most likely it will be cut will be because you are dead. Okay, in the distance, black smoke curls upwards. You have four BLTs. Check the sword. At least you have your blade. You draw your assassin sword an inch from its scabbard, its edge flashing in the dying sunlight. It is a fine, strong weapon. You're well armed for whatever terrors lie ahead. Pulling up your hood against the chill air, you stride onwards through the meager mountain sunlight. You must not linger out here. I don't want to uh, do any spoilers. He waited for the plus twos to come in. Well, I read it in chat. So there already was a, a chat plus two, so I'm just, just uh, talking about it. You reflect on your progress with a heavy heart as you climb. The backlands were a cursed place, and your journey across them was slow. Was it? Even with the serpents defeated, caution would be wise. It is possible that other messengers will have brought news of your presence to the Archmage's ears. Walk on. You walk on, head held high. Up the steps. The wind picks up as the evening draws on. It will be night soon. The Zanzunu peaks rise on either side like jagged teeth. The path winds back and forth as it climbs, and glimpses of the brooding horror of Mampang come and go. You should make progress while there is still plenty of light. Sing as I climb. You try to sing as you climb. An old Annalan song that tells of a wandering wizard and his three small children. But even you cannot be jolly in this dread place. The song dies in your throat. Okay. Rough undergrowth. Rough undergrowth springs up, lining the path on either side. Uh, let's... Should we just look in it? Perhaps one of the acolytes who climbed this way years ago dropped something of use. You pause and push back the undergrowth with the blade of your sword, and then jump as you disturb a nesting spike hawk. The creature flaps in alarm. Kill it, stay back, or walk away. My acolytes! My acolytes! Stay back. Alright, I'm gonna stay back. You stay well clear, and the hawk screams and flaps its wide wings, but does not chase you. It sounds something like this. I can't do that voice anymore. I'm fucking 40. Never mind. Uh, should I talk? Maybe I can talk to him. Talk with animals? Let's just, why not? Grabbing the wig from your pack, you pull it onto your head and weave your spell. Faint chitterings from the bush resolve into words. Worms! <laughs> Worms! Dark! Dark! Uh, speak a greeting? Greetings! I am a traveler. A moment later, the bushes part, and a mother spike hawk rises from the undergrowth. Intruder! Attack! Beast! Eyes! Get the eyes! I mean you no harm. I mean you no harm, you reply quickly. The wig translating your intention into clicks of your tongue and curious squawks. Harm? Harm! The bird screeches back, rising higher. Oh, shit. Back off. I come in peace. What, what am I, a fucking alien? Did I just, did I just get out of a spaceship? <laughs> I come in peace. Peace. <laughs> Settling somewhat, the bird. What can you tell me of Mampang? You ask. Mampang! <laughs> evil magic! Evil! <laughs> evil magic! <laughs> That's not even a bird. That's just somebody that has the hiccups really bad today. But I'm gonna stay with it. Mampang! <laughs> <laughs> evil magic! Evil! Finally, the spell fades. The bird settles back into the bushes. You resume the climb up the endless stairs. 
Hey, well, we avoided a fight. That's always a good thing. That was a donkey. <laughs> yeah, that was one step away from like, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. The sun is now sinking down. Soon it'll be dark. You reach the top of the stairs, rounding the corner, you find three cave mouths set into the rock. Three cave mouths. Let's take a look. You regard the caves with interest. The middle cave has the smallest entrance and probably opens into a, a niche and nothing more. The nearest cave would be large enough for a fire, but looks deep enough to contain any number of nasty surprises. A series of hoof prints lead into the mouth of the furthest cave. Okay, so in the furthest cave, something obviously went in there. The middle cave is small, really small. And the closest one is big enough to go in there and sit down, but there's somebody might be in there. Uh, look at the hoof prints. You take a closer look at the hoof prints, they are deep enough to suggest a largest creature, but they are no longer fresh. They're at least a few days old. You also know that there are no prints coming out of the cave. Okay, so something's in there. What can I do? Can I just throw... Just, just fucking bowling ball of fireball into one of them? Can I just throw a fireball? That would be very rude. Cause stupidity? Pop? I just throw a grenade. Why would I throw- just roll a gr- BLT! <laughs> you craft a BLT out of thin air. Delicious mayo. Crisp lettuce. Crunchy bacon. Juicy tomato slice. You then squish it up into a ball and roll it into the furthest cave. Okay. Um, I don't know. Open locks and doors. That's, I wonder. There's no gob, so we can't do goblin. It's really just throw a grenade or not. Heal disease. Maybe there's somebody in there that's sick or something? I could. Ooh, I got it. How about how? Find safe passage. Let's do it. You cast a spell, and a familiar, calm voice begins to speak to you. Every cave has its dangers. This voice informs you. The smallest cave requires courage. The largest, brawn. But what the third cave requires you, I'm never going to find out. Bye. What? The smallest cave requires courage. The largest, brawn. Aren't these kind of the same thing? What the... Th well, how do I know what one, two, and three is? I'm gonna call out. Who's there? You call, hoping the owner of the hoofprints will appear, but there's no response. The caves are unlikely to contain anything but nasty surprises, surely. Okay, so this is the... What, 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 did, what did Bugleberry say? Let me see. Okay. Small, shallow is courage. Large is, uh, large is fight something, right, obviously. The third cave requires you never find out. So it's saying, don't go in here. I might just die. But that's sort of intriguing, isn't it? I'm going in here. Shallow. Right in the middle. You approach the smallest cave mouth and kneel down to peer inside. You might be able to crawl inside, but it would be a tight squeeze. I don't know if I want to... That would scare the shit out of anybody that was in here. Okay. 
Okay. Protect from magic? That might not be a bad idea. Put the wig on and just start talking? Do big? I don't think I can... Why, that, I would just die. I don't think big is even an option. Uh, summon replica. Uh, there's uh, summon darkness. I wouldn't want to do that. If force field's not a bad idea either. See the future. I'm gonna do it. You settle into a sitting position on the ground and take out the orb of crystal. Looking to the stars, you craft the magic and suddenly you find yourself somewhere quite new. You stand on a bridge slung across a deep chasm. As you step on the planks of the wood, the bridge begins to whisper in your mind. Cruel and humiliating thoughts assail you. Uh. Step forward. You take another step forward, but all your hope is gone. Your body feels like lead, but then you find you are reaching into your pack and taking something out, slipping something onto your feet. Look down. You look down, hoping to see what you are wearing, but catch sight of the dizzying drop below you and your head begins to swim. The vision fades. As your eyes adjust to the darkness within, you can see that beyond the entrance, the space opens up somewhat, opens out somewhat. Looney Tunes? Yeah, that was kind of like a Wile E. Coyote bit. I was going to scream in here. You call a wordless greeting into the cave mouth, listening for the echo, ready to react should you disturb any creatures. Nothing stirs. Then a shrill howling issues from the cave. <laughs> like, what am I even doing? Do it again. You call inside again a wordless cry of threat. Then wait, expecting something to rush you any moment, but still nothing emerges. Toss a stone into the cave? Am I going to get rid of an item here? Hold on. Yeah, that would be a pebble, right? I don't think I want to throw this. Just live in this cave forever. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't remove anything. I'll try it. Throw a stone in the cave. Okay. You find a stone nearby and toss it into the cave. Nothing happens at first. A howl issues from the cave once more. I'm going to walk through here and just instantly die. Crawl inside. Stealing your courage, you crawl into the mouth of the cave. Inside the cave. You're barely through the entrance of the cave when the howling noise sounds again. It is now somewhat, somewhere terribly close at hand. Just start stabbing out in the darkness? How about, um, <laughs> let's get out. Strike a light? You could use the tinderbox... To make a spark. Burn the Marsh Goblin scroll. Burn my spell book. It's always the spell book. No, don't burn anything. I'm gonna wait. Fucking zoom beanie. You wait a moment and slowly your eyes adjust to the dark, but you can still see nothing in the chamber. Then a tiny creature brushes your leg. Yes, dear, yes, dear. Yes, dear, yes, dear. Anybody get that one? That was very specific. The thing is a jib-jib. No more dangerous than an overgrown mouse. Threaten the creature. Get the fuck away from me! Look at it. Covered in fur and no larger than a bomba fruit. Stands on two duck-like feet. Its body must be mostly lungs, as despite its size, when it howls, it makes a noise like a horn. I feel like it's kind of mean to just 
be mean to the little creature. No, I'm going to leave the creature alone. You leave the creature, it howls a few more times, but it's beginning to realize you are not afraid. A moment later, it scurries away out of the cave. Okay. The cave appears otherwise empty. This would be a dry, well-protected place to rest if it was nighttime. But it is too early to sleep. What time is it? Uh, I'm not going to eat. I'll leave the cave. There was just a, a little Zumbini guy in there. That's it. I guess I could have threatened it. Okay, the sun is almost set. And the sky is a deep pink. The path continues on past the other caves. Do I want to do any of the other caves? I feel like I'm afraid to do it. That one was no danger. This one said I'm to be scared of this. Why not? I can always rewind it. I have three re rewinds. Stepping towards the northernmost cave, you see a few more sets of older hoof marks near to the mouth. Let's see if we can peer in. The cave appears to be deep, but quite empty. Whatever creature made the hoof prints, it has either left another way, or is hiding in the furthest shadows. You draw your sword in preparation, feeling more secure with the metal in your hand. Enter. You step inside the mouth of the cave. Outside, night has fallen. But in a moment, you stop. For sitting on a rock just inside the mouth of the cave is a figure. <laughs> you can really be a dick in this game. You can you can truly be I'm just a I'm just a maniac in this game. You can just I'm just going to attack this person, but I'm not going to. Look. The figure is in shadow, but it is human-like and naked. A long mane of hair sweeps down over its back, which is turned towards you. Clearly, you are treading quietly as the figure has not turned around. Honestly, I'm not even sure this is a good idea. Imagine just being... I, I feel like somebody being like... Hey, what's up, dude? What's up? What the, somebody's in the fucking cave with me. Like, I would, I would freak the fuck out. Uh, what can I do? Oh, this is why you try to get all the items, and it can be kind of a pain, but I can, I can read this creature's mind. <laughs> That's even worse. Not only am I saying hello, I'm saying hello telepathically. That would be awful. Okay, you bind the starlight into shape around you, pulling on the cloth as you do so. Why not? Greet the creature telepathically. Greetings. You think, but there's no response. As though you're not being heard. Uh, can I listen? You focus and try to read the creature's thoughts. But despite reaching out with your mind, you sense nothing. Either it is shielded against magic... Or it is entirely without thoughts. You remove the skull cap. You sense that this creature cannot rotate a cube in their mind. What do you do now? Um, whatever. Who is there? You call out. The figure makes no reaction. <laughs> Call again. Will you not greet me? Still nothing. Perhaps the creature is deaf. Oh, these are all bad. These are all fucking bad. I don't... Alright, I'm... You reach out to touch the creature's shoulder. The figure shudders a moment, then slides from its rock to the floor. Oh, I think this creature is dead. You look over the creature. It is a woman. With a human torso, but her legs are thick with hair, 
and end in hoofs. Her face is a blend of human and goat-like features, and two short horns rise from her forehead. She is quite clearly dead. Bury, bury the body? Search? Leave? Can I? Okay, can I? Uh, I'm going to bury. Search? Do you have, does, it, does she have a pack? Oh, you, you, okay. She's carrying nothing. Her skin is quite cold. All right, we're going to bury. We're going to bury the body. It is hard work digging in the dirt of the cave floor with your assassin sword. But after an hour or so, you've made a pit deep enough to roll the body into. You lay it down as gently as you can and then move the dirt back over it once more. The dust clears and you are left quite alone. <laughs> digging with a... Yeah, how the fuck would you dig with a sword? Use your hands. That'd be way more effective. Um... I... I should... I'm gonna sleep here. You should be safe here. Laying your pack down, you try to settle despite the hard floor. You've not eaten yet today. Uh... I'll eat something. You eat an apple and feel much better for it. Then you close your eyes and let your tiredness overtake you. Dream. What is left of the night is filled with visions. Jib-jibs are bouncing past you, appearing from all sides. Their maniac eyes are all but popping from their heads. You are standing on top of a tall, black-tiled tower, clinging onto its tiles with one hand, while with the other you all wave something in the air. What is it? You look in your hand to find you are holding nothing less than the crown itself. Then, you hear a cawing sound, and a great shape moves towards you. A birdman? No. A gold crest eagle, shimmering into view. The Sightmasters have seen you. They are taking you home. Okay. You ate one provision, explored the caves of Paisamon, and began your ascent into the mountains. The Archmage remains unaware of you. But that's, really, that's actually a huge deal. You wake to the sunlight spilling through the cave mouth. I just ate, so I don't need to eat again. You head outside once more, leaving the solemn earth mound behind. Sun breaks over the horizon. I guess I could... This one, I'm, I don't want to fight whatever it is in there. So I'm just going to keep going. You leave the caves behind. The steps are becoming wider as the path turns to follow the edge of a deep chasm. Walk on. A little further on, a rock ledge juts out into the chasm. Two posts stand on either side, with a narrow and rather ancient wooden bridge lashed to them. Okay. I think this is the bridge in the from the the future thing. What's the goal of part four? The goal of part four is to go find the Archmage and go get the crown. All right, look at the bridge. The bridge must be a hundred years old at least. It is set into timber supports driven deep into fixtures out of sight below the ledge. Seems like it might still be solid. Uh, okay. I have to be careful because I think I'm going to fall. You glance down at the path ahead and see a line of hoof prints similar to those you saw outside the cave. They lead away past the bridge. Hmm. Okay. You lift your eyes to look across the chasm to the other side, where more mountains rise up. A cleft line in their peaks traces a narrow road, and atop one summit is what looks like a large bird's nest. Cross the bridge or move on. I don't want to throw it. I, I want to keep my money. Okay, time to continue. If the bridge is sound, it would get you quickly closer to the citadel. And somebody said, can you zoom out? Yes, I can. Here is Bampang. Got a little ways to go before we get there, though. Alright, uh... This looks kind of interesting. The bridge, I don't know if it's safe. It might be. But I kind of want to go this way. 
this is much longer, but I feel like kind of interesting. All right, let's go to the winding path. You, just, you guys just got Elden Ring to this, right? Or you make your way along the track, then pause for breath. The air stirs a little, still cold, but fresh, at least. A jutting rock sticks out just by the edge of the ravine. Look at the rock. The rock is like a hooked claw poking out of the edge of the chasm and looking out over the drop. The far face is grown over with thick, fleshy green moss. Ooh, green moss. <laughs> Why did I say it like that? Ooh, gr actually green moss. You grab a handful of the moss, it feels juicy and fresh. I'm going to take it. No, not taste it. Oh, I guess I can just eat it. Eat it. Healing warmth. Yeah, we we got full health, though. Look into the ravine. The ravine on the north side of the path is deep, but not impossibly so. A sheer drop becomes softer as the ground curves towards grassland within view. Let me take a look. So I could do this. I technically could drop the rope down, go this way and come up here. I think that's what that's implying. Investigate whatever this is. Or just keep going the long way down this path. I think I want to go the long way. Look, if, if this is part four, this is the final part. So let's not skip it. Let's take our let's take our time with it. Let's go the long way. Yeah, that's riskier. I'll probably take damage doing that. Okay, up the path. The path crosses a rocky plateau which rises gradually. Few clouds move across the heavens. You are almost in the peaks now, with sheer drops opening on either side. The plateau is relatively sheltered, but there's no time to waste here. Ooh. Okay, let's keep going. A sheer rock wall stretches high on your right, while a drop is to your left. Follow the path as it curves around. As the morning moves on, the wind begins to rise. The path quickly narrows, and you have to press yourself against the wall at times. You follow the trail around a corner, stopping a short, stopping short in view of a jutting ledge. The path turns to fresh mud, pressed with hoof prints. Take a look. The prints are similar to the ones you saw before outside the cave. Could there be more of the goat people here? You continue upwards, sweating under your pack, head low. But as you wind around a bend, a voice like gravel calls out. Halt! You stop. In your tracks. And a rock strikes you on the temple. What? Looking sharply up, you see two creatures, each half human and half goat, perched against the southern slope, spears held ready. What is your business? One demands. Okay. So here, here are the goat people. Who are you? I mean you no harm. I discovered one of your companions. Hey, I think this is it. I discovered one. Should I say that immediately? Or are they going to throw another rock at my head? I discovered one of your companions. One lowers her spear. Where? In a cave. She is dead. Uh. Shit. In a cave. How was she? She demands. Her concern is clear. <laughs> Dead. That's not a nice way to say that. Oh, how was she? Dead. I have to say this, though, because if I lie and they go find out that she's dead, they're going to think I did it. Dead. Dead. As expected. You must have discovered... Shehimbli. She disappeared a few nights ago. 
She was very ill. And I suspect she left to prevent her disease from spreading to others. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it is hard to hear of her fate, but I am glad you told us of her sacrifice. Forgive my curiosity, the second goat woman says. But where are you traveling from? Just, <laughs> Just walk away. Uh, uh, tell them something. You take a moment to prepare a reply. Are these creatures servants of the Archmage? Or are they his enemies? I come from Analand, and I journey to Mampang. From Kare, off to sell goods in Mampang. From the Southern Plains, with no destination in mind. Let's just go. Let's just tell the truth. I come from Analand, and I journey to Mampang. You declare, unafraid, who should hear your words. Mampang! Ah, oh, the cursed place! And what is your purpose? I will recover the crown of kings to find a lost heirloom. I will not say. Uh, to find a lost heirloom. Do not mock us, stranger. <clears throat> we are an isolated people, but even we know respect. Unlike yourself, it seems. Do not test me. I'm not used to strangers. I mean no offense. Do not test me. I am sorry, I'm not used to talking to strangers. As we are not, I suppose there was no harm done. The creature nods. Please, come with us. Shihori will wish to hear what you have to say. The hoofborns turn and begin to climb up a side path. It's what we're doing right now. We will take you to our village if you are willing. Who is she Shihori? Our leader, the best of us, the first. You will come? I cannot come with you. I cannot climb. I cannot. As to uh, my back hurts and my legs hurt. Uh, I can't come. I'm sorry. Maybe another time. Lead the way. Take me with you. The two hoofborn sling their spears and beckon you to one side. To a narrow way, almost invisible behind an outcrop of stone. And then you begin to climb. Into the peaks. As the sun climbs the sky, the winds begin to rise. After about 20 minutes of climbing, the hoofborn pause to let you catch your breath. They're impressively nimble on the rocky paths, using their small hooves to perch on narrow ledges. As you continue, they even have to help you climb up unstable stretches. Eventually, you spot a cluster of huts surrounding some caves. Hmm. Approach the village. This is elaborate. Okay. You follow your guides towards the village. On an outcrop above, you spy two hoofborn standing guards, spears and rocks at the ready. It seems these creatures take their protection seriously. Now, you find Shihori. One of your guides says to you, she will be keen to hear of our companion's fate. I will talk to her. The hoofborn nod. All right, well, we got a whole village here. The village outskirts. Your guides grow quiet as you enter the village. There are a few well-maintained huts, but it is clear many of the hoofborn live in holes in the cliff face. Let's take a look. From the outside, the caves appear clean and spacious. A surprising number of hoofborn stream out to gawk at you. These caves must honeycomb the entire mountainside. An older hoofborn, draped in several hides, emerges from a larger cave. One of your guides extends her arm straight out. Shihori, Shihori, we have brought a visitor. Shihori stretches her arms towards you, just as the guide did. Welcome. We do not entertain often. 
You open your arms to begin casting a spell, but Shihuri knocks your wrist apart with a swift movement of the butt of her spear. Do not think we do not understand the ways of sorcerers. I know that to sever a sorcerer's hand is to remove their power. Do not test me on my resolve. Mm. Oops. Sorry. Accepted. I found one of your villagers in a cave. You tell her, relating your discovery of the dead hoofborn girl. Ah, yes. That was Shihimbli, the poor creature. She caught a terrible disease, and rather than risk the village, she slipped out at night. A scout saw her heading down slope, looking for a place to die. What disease? The trembling sickness that plagues our kind and stalks the mountains like a vengeful ghost. The creature looks up at you with large, bleary, goat-like eyes. What did you do with her body? She asks. I buried it. I burned it. Nothing. I buried it. Then I must ask you to leave us. Trembling sickness is most infectious. We cannot take the chance. I am not ill. She looks uncertain. You do not seem to have the symptoms. Mm -mm. Even as her spear point comes up. The girl had been dead for some time. You tell her. Whatever disease she had was gone from her bones. <laughs> How the fuck do I know that? I thought, what am I, a doctor? Am I like a scientist? How would I know that? Shihori stares at you and shakes her head. She lowers her spear. I hope you are not lying to us, stranger. We have lost too many to the disease already. Shihori looks to your guide. From where does this one come? Anna-land. He claims to be on a quest. Is that so? Shh, don't tell- Oh, it's a secret! Indeed. Do not tell me your purpose. I just wish to know this. Will it harm the Archmage? Well, I mean, I hope- I hope so! I hope so! I hope so! Greatly. Greatly. Excellent! But you must be careful in Mampang. It is a chaotic place. And cruel. The Archmage wields complete control, but does not always exercise it. Petty crimes and suffering go unnoticed, but you will not. He has spies, Oliver Zaman. It is likely he knows you are coming. I took care of his servants. I do not think he does, not yet. I will be wary. I took care of his serpents. Did you? And perhaps you have a chance after all. Uh, can I come in? Can I enter your village? The hoofborn leader makes a cantering step backwards and ducks her head. Feel free. Eat and rest. You will be watched. We also have items to trade, if you are willing. You're diseased. I... that's not confirmed. I'm... Uh, that's not confirmed. <laughs> I am not... Uh, <laughs> fuck. But how... I don't know. How long was she dead in there for? Because that's a good point, like, I, how it's been a while, right? You step into the center of the village. The watching hoofborn gradually disperse back into their groups. Some into caves, and others go to a gathering around a fire. Ooh, a few places to go. Uh, I got money, so let's go to the trader. Against one rock face, a thin hoofborn stands beside a few broken packing crates stocked with trinkets. He raises his hand as you approach in greeting. Greetings. 
This is uh, what we have. The trader tells you. I'm afraid it is not much. Perhaps something here will be of interest. From across the clearing, you hear Shihori call out. Treat this one fairly, Rahan. He is a friend to our kind. The trader nods. Who do you trade with? You ask, somewhat puzzled. The poor creature shrugs slightly. You are the first. But one day I hope to open a true trading post. You peer into the crates. The creature has a curious assortment of items. <laughs> why, is he, why is he German? I don't know. I looked over a chat and I saw somebody say, One year later, one voice. And I said, you know what? Fucking next one's going to be German, okay? That's what happened. That is the truth. That is what happened. That's just the truth. I have to tell you the truth. Okay. You peer into the crates. The creature has a curious assortment of items. Some most likely highly valuable. Others all but worthless. It is almost a parody of a shop. The crates are all labeled in scrawled writing. The first is marked six gold and the second 12 gold. A spear leans against one of the crates. Okay, well, look at these expensive crate. You scan the items in the high-priced crate. A brass rod with a weight. You lift a brass rod, which turns out to be a pendulum, with a gently pivoted handle at its top. It swings with an easy weight until the trader catches it. None of that. I won't have you casting any sleeping spells on me. Okay. Of course not. What shopkeeper would fall for that? Indeed. Um. Oh, this is 12? 12 gold? That's a lot of money. You can never have too many items, though. I'll get it. The long brass pendulum only just fits into your backpack. You hand over 12 gold pieces. You look up once more. There's nothing else in this box. Look in the cheap crate. The cheaper crate is mostly empty. And you have to dig to find anything amongst the sawdust in which things are kept. A glass bottle. A pair of nose plugs. Orange rock dust. An apple. Uh, I think that's for, like, the smelly spell. Hold on. Let's see. Yep. It's Nif. Spell causes the air to fill with a nauseating stench so vile that any creature catching a whiff will need to vomit. This includes the caster. Unless they are wearing nose plugs. The effect is more pronounced on creatures with large noses. Okay, so it's the puke spell. Uh, how much? No, I didn't want to click that. The orange dust is piled in one corner of the crate, but when you ask, the hoofborn assures you it is for sale. Finest amber grind. Better than the rust, even. If you know what to do with it. That was all of Europe in one accent. I don't know. That was remarkable how that happened. Okay. Um. What can I do with it? And what is that? Mm. I am no sorcerer. Orange dust? What is it? What is the orange dust used for? Sand? Fire water, mirror, yellow powder. I mean, it's orange. It was clearly orange. Sun jewel. I have most of these. Crystal orb. What is it for? an option to ask what it is? Yeah, he, I don't think he knows. He said, I'm not a sorcerer. How would I know? But why would he own it? 
Hey, what's this for? I don't know. It was orange and I picked it up off the ground. Maybe it is just like sand. Hmm. I mean, I got, I got money. I got money. How much was it? Six gold, right? I got money. I'll buy it. You pour the orange rock dust carefully into your pouch. You pay the merchant. You scan the remaining items in the crate. Uh, how much are the nose plugs? Six, right? Yep. Definitely want those. A uh, glass bottle. Clear liquid inside of a glass bottle. What does it smell like? You go to remove the stopper. Poom! What the? Hold on. Let me do that better. You go to remove the stopper. Poom! But the hoofborn stops you. It's fire water. It evaporates extremely fast once exposed to air. So buy it if you want to drink it. Oh, I want that. Give it to me. Okay. What about an apple? An old apple sits in sawdust. In surprisingly good condition, considering it must have been here for some time. Uh, it's food. I want it. Oh, shit. There's a spear. You lift the spear and the trader nods. It is a blessed hardwood spear. It is virtually unbreakable. And very expensive indeed. How much? A 70 gold pieces. That is robbery. But the trader shrugs? No. Robbery would be anything else. But never mind. You need not buy it after all. I have seen enough. You thank the trader and move away. How would you ever have 70 gold at this point in the fourth game? 70 gold. I guess if you just didn't buy a bunch of bullshit like I did. Okay, I've seen enough. Thank the trader and move away. The village is small. There could be more than 100. There could be not more than 100 inhabitants. Uh... This is Shihori, fire, and viewpoint. Sell your teeth. I think there was only one place I could do that. Let me go look at the viewpoint. On the north side of the village is a lookout point that offers a spectacular view across the valley below. You stay for a while, watching birdmen circling the peaks across the ravine to the north. One of the hoofborn comes to join you. They are cruel creatures born of pure hate. But they say they are nesting in the mountains outside Mampang. All birds make nests. They are not birds. No more than we are goats. Birdmen cannot have children of their own. Only the Archmage can birth them. Looking around, you suddenly notice the tro He's had he said something true. In the whole village, you have not seen a single infant. Oh, that's like, that has, that's like top five best chat message of the last, like, month. Oh, my goodness. Uh, somebody said, from software, Trump. God damn it. Like, don't you just get mad when you don't, when you, like, I wish I thought of that. Like, I wish I thought of something that funny. That's so funny. Okay, well, I'm gonna, uh, that's what I'm doing. That's what this person sounds like. So, I don't even remember, how, I don't even remember, I don't remember the voice now because I'm so, th I'm thinking about it too much. So why do they build nests? The hoofborn man shakes his head. I do not know. It's a mystery. Perhaps they believe that nests will make eggs come. I cannot say. <laughs> You cannot have children of your own? We cannot. The hoofborn strikes his chest with a palm. Ow, I did that in real life. Go in peace, stranger. <laughs> believe, believe me. 
Uh, the fire. You go over to the fire and sit down with the gathered hoofborn. They're sharing out a meal that smells of oranges and charred wood. Uh, I will eat. You sit with the hoofborn and share their meal. It is a greasy chunk of meat with some kind of sweet glaze that smells of oranges. It sits in a bowl of small grains and is very filling. That sounds good. That sounds great, actually. Doesn't that sound good? Ah, fresh water with some delicious... What's in here? I put something in it. Ah, no, not vodka. <laughs> yeah, I put vodka in my water. No, what? That would be terrible. Paint thinner. <laughs> no, not that either. It's like, like a little like hydration packet thing. Okay, here we go. Let's talk. Since the Hoofborn are so entranced with the wider world, you offer to tell them of your adventures. They surround you with eager faces as you speak of the gloomy, abandoned house of the blind noble Theta and the austere meeting hall of the council. You tell them the story of your journey through the vast plains. You tell them about Lake Eklala and your battle with the dreaded water serpent. They clearly do not believe half of what you say, but enjoy the adventure nonetheless. They look wistfully across the mountains when you are finished. The fire smolders gently. Ask about the Archmage. What can you tell me of the Archmage? One of the goat people shrugs. Another laughs. Strange rumors come out of Mampang, stranger. Strange rumors indeed. I can imagine. There are those merchants and traders, mostly, who say Mampang is run by the guards. They say the Archmage does not appear. Perhaps he is a recluse. The goat person shrugs once more. The merchants say he is dead. They say if he was alive, he would be over a thousand years old. But who can say? It is certainly true he never steps outside of Mampang. That is all they will say. You get to your feet once more and look around the village. There are some youths playing around in the dirt. They are hairier than their elders. Some are using all four legs. Do they grow into their humanity? Or are the younger ones simply more goat-like due to the Archmage's interference? Yes. Here. You approach Shihori, who is seated outside a largest hut and not a greeting. Greetings. I hope you are finding our village comfortable. Uh, thank you. This will be your last respite, I think. Mm. Shihori looks away into the distance, and for the first time you notice that her eyes are blurry and weak. You are blind? Not yet, but I lose sight with every passing year. We are all, we are all made creatures, but not made to last. You've been to Mampang. Ugh. We used to live in Mampang. Several of us, at any rate, we escaped. You were the Archmage's prisoners? Of a sort. No, oh, you were experiments? Yes. We. Yes, we. That is horrifying. She stomps once, a sharp sound that echoes through the nearby caves. We are not horrors, she says. We are the product of cruelty, but that does not define us. Oh, shit. Well, can you tell me of the birdmen? What will your people do? I'm told you cannot have children. There's nothing we can do. We must live as well as we can. 
And that is all. You nod and turn to leave. One last thing before you step away. If you should find the Archmage. Yes? Kill him without hesitation. With that, she looks away, her weak eyes searching the distant horizons for answers. I will. I will. You head for the edge of the village, but Shihori clip-clops over to you. She is armed now with a long and heavy spear, which she levels at you. What? Shihori? Shihori holds your gaze for a moment, then flips the spear around to lie handle first. It's a blessed spear. Take it as a thanks. It may help you to penetrate the defenses that surround the Archmage. This thing was 70 bucks. I, I almost bought this if I had the money. Go sell it for 70 gold. Thank you. I am honored. You take the spear and strap it to your back. It feels as promised most firmly made. Now go. And may the gods of the old world be with you. You turn to take your leave. A guard accompanies you back to the main path. You're grateful for it. As the route is so steep, you risk a fall without help. So how, let me see, what is this thing? How good is it? Blessed Hardwood Spear. Hardwood Spear declared to be unbreakable by the Hoofborn. I have a lot of weapons. Interesting. Now this is really funny. Once at the road, your guide extends his arms in the hoofborn bow. Thank you for your news and stories, traveler. But we would appreciate if you did not return. We cannot risk a spy from Mampang following you to discover our home. I will destroy Mampang! He smiles, extends his arms again, and disappears up the narrow path. Okay, back to the trail. Am I going to be okay going down here? You skitter and scramble the last few lengths down to the trail once more. The sun is beginning to lower and the air begins to cool. Look for the hoofborn path. Yeah, that's a good idea. You look back trying to find the path by which you climbed up into the peaks, but after a few false starts, you've managed to nothing but a few scrapes and falls. Perhaps you only ever had the confidence to climb such a slope because the hoofborn were leading you. At any rate, the Curious Cave Village now is vanished from reach. The path runs in both directions along the chasm edge. Alright, so what what is this way? I can go over here. I can go over here. There's going to be a few opportunities across the bridge, but what is this? I want to know what that is. Bro, you're a wizard. Just float. <laughs> well, we're going to go this way anyways. You walk along the edge of a sharp ledge, which looks down to the deep chasm. The gap is wide, but across it you can see a path winding through the mountains towards Mampang Fortress. A rope hangs suspended in mid-air above the chasm. Its near end is coiled up neatly on the path. That's probably a trap. Let's find out. Okay. It's one way to do it. Read minds of who? I mean, we're going to go for it. One stamina. You weave the enchantment. A quiet voice enters your mind. The voice informs you 
that the rope swing is a trap. But so are the bridges and the path ahead. And then before it can offer anything more useful, the voice fades from your mind. So everything sucks. Okay, good. Hey, be careful. That rope swing is a trap. So are all the bridges. So are all the paths. So are all the foods. So is the air that you breathe. Everything is going to kill you. Good luck. Everything is sus. You are fucked. <laughs> Um, I, I guess it doesn't really matter. Looking to your right, you notice the trail continues. You think you see a bridge in the distance. What are the, what can I, what else can I do? That's not a bad one either. You cast the spell. Expecting expecting the calm voice of the enchantment to talk into your ear, but it does not come. Instead, without any explanation, the rope's invisible anchor point seems to evaporate and the rope plunges away into the ravine and is gone. Definitely a fixed spell. Countered by how. Oh. Okay. You lean over looking down the chasm. I knew it wasn't going to be that easy. There is no sign of the rope. At the bottom, you can make out a rocky path that winds out of view. It is all but hidden below a layer of fog. Uh, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go all the way to the end here. If I can. Okay. The rope was clearly a death trap. You leave it behind, walking towards the bridge in the distance. For a moment, you seem to see something moving on the slopes above you. Well, let's look. You look up but can see nothing. A hoofborn, perhaps, watching your progress. Wave. Hey! A few moments later, a rock strikes you on the temple, though you do not see if it was thrown or if it simply fell. <laughs> okay. Apparently it didn't hurt very much. Make a move. Who's throwing rocks at me? Why? I. It has to be somebody from here. What the fuck? You definitely have a dent in your temple now. Yeah. It's Gollum. That's Shibiri the rock thrower. Shibiri, Shibiri is Elden Ring. Shibiri. Okay, you head along the path until you reach the foot of the sturdy-looking bridge that spans the chasm here. The sun begins to dip, heading towards the horizon. Sturdy-looking bridge that spans the chasm here. I am not going over that bridge. Uh, Bugleberry told me it was unsafe. Make chaos! Take the world! The wind picks up as the evening draws on. It will be dark soon. Continuing around the side of the mountain, your hopes are lifted as the path up ahead pinches and curves back in on itself. The chasm itself has shrunk to a small gap. Oh, I can jump this. Well, should I? Should I just keep going? Look across. Looking across the chasm, there is a rough path cleft into the far peak. It curves away out of sight, roughly in the direction of Mampang. Does that say judge the gap or fudge the gap? Okay, it's judge. The gap cannot be much wider than a stride and a half. With a decent run-up, you should be able to make it. Uh, should I jump it or should I just keep going? Just fudge it? Alright, I'm gonna fudge it. You take a run up, rush forward, and hurl yourself into open space. The jump is short, 
and you are confident until a moment before you land when two strong talons scream down out of the sky and skewer through your shoulders. Hey! Look up. You twist your head up and find yourself staring at the feathered lower body of a bird man. Then you are being dragged up into the air, each wing beat sending arcs of pain throughout your body. <laughs> okay. I think I remember this. I remember that this is this is possible. The mountains become a furry gray. <laughs> I was going to say fury. The mountains become a furry gray as you rise. The ravines are now nothing but deep black scars. Cast a spell. You try to spread your arms to cast a spell, but the talons have been skewered expertly to prevent your arms from lifting upwards. The creature wheels in the sky, crowing with evil delight. It is still rising. Oh, shit. The Birdman screams out in a cruel and vibrant voice. Threaten the creature. You scream a threat at the bird, brutal, angry, disgusted. Perhaps the creature takes offense, or perhaps it was always going to do the same thing. Either way, a moment later, the talons open. The Birdman banks above a peak as it releases you, and you tumble downwards through the air. I have health. I just lost like all my health. You land somewhere with a heavy thump that knocks all the wind from your frame. You're on some kind of loose straw, which has cushioned you. Overhead, the Birdman wheels and circles away. Presumably, it believes you cannot leave. Look around. It takes a moment to realize where you are. This is a nest. The nest is an intricate construction of twigs and branches built into a natural cleft in the peak. The wind whips past a short distance away. Everything it can grasp has already been taken. On one side is a dark hole in the straw that might be large enough for you to crawl through. Um, strike a light. Should I wait? I don't want to burn my spell book. I'm going to go inside. You crawl through the hole into the heart of the nest. I'm going in. The inside of the nest is a curious bell-shaped chamber open to the sky. The walls are of woven straw, matted with feathers and scraps of fur. Uh, search the nest. You poke around the nest, eventually coming across a black face mask, packed roughly into one of the walls. But as you weigh your find in your hands, you hear a shriek from behind you. Draw my sword. Oh boy. You draw your sword as talons rake down your back, leaving deep cuts. You roll away, dodging another splash. Once on your feet, you come face to face with the nest's owner, who has returned. The Birdman's wings are outstretched, clawed hands already up and ready to tear at your body. The vicious talons drip with your blood. Full blast. Probably a bad idea. Uh... The Birdman charges across the nest, spitting and cursing. You squat into a defensive crouch, blade raised. The Birdman rushes at you before slipping aside moments before he strikes, merely scraping at your defenses. You escape mostly unscathed. The Birdman opens his beak to cry, and his feet worry at the ground. Alright, well, definitely coming in hard now. Really? That's it? Shit. I'm so nervous. He's got so much... You stay low. The Birdman tries to slice you with a lazy slash of his claws, but you duck. Birdman issues a bloody call and spreads its wings. All right, I, you don't have enough. Full blast. That's a huge blow. That's a massive deal. Okay. Your blade sings as it parts the air, cutting straight through his own vicious, ragged attack. 
You cut the birdman deep into his belly. The creature howls at you in fury. He clicks together long nails once more. He is still determined to fight. Let's go again, then. Oh, you're fucking done. Okay, the creature screams in a blood-curdling tongue. He stretches his cruel nails. I, do I still have more? I think I still might have more than... Yep. Alright, now nah, I gotta defend. You cut a side blow. The birdman wails as your blow connects. He rises sharply backwards. He stretches his long nails. Uh, I have to defend. I don't have enough. I, I, I may have... That was like 1.8. Nice. All right. Got it. Uh, I'm just going it again. Just barely, but I got it. Another chance follows. You jump through the air, hoping to catch the creature. The birdman falls to the ground, feathers drifting from his body. The savage light in his eyes has gone dark. While the birdmen may be delicately boned, they are vicious fighters. You stagger back against the straw, grasping for... Yeah, your breath is gone. You're... Look at you. All right, let's get that mask. You look around the chamber with interest. It is all wrong. It is as though the birdmen are not sure exactly how a proper nest should be made. This place is a weird hybrid. Part nest and part straw hut. You crawl back out of the nest. Did I get the mask? I got it, okay. Back outside. Uh, can I strike a light without my... You bend down and spark a flame. A moment later, the flame has jumped to the dry straw of the nest. The delicate twigs begin to glow and curl. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh... Hold on, let me read this again. You emerge into the fresh air and biting wind on the edge of the cliff. Night has fallen and you are worn out. You should find somewhere safe to sleep. For if you keep going through the night, you will be weaker for it. And then I just burnt the whole fucking place down. I have to extinguish the flames. You stamp out the flames, but they have spread too far and are too fast to put out. Uh, you wait, cruelly admiring your handiwork as the nest roars into a pyre. There's nothing else to do but risk the climb down to the path. It cannot be more dangerous than staying here. This was a perfect place to sleep. And eat something. Shit. You clamber slowly and carefully back down to the path. Smoke plumes from the nest above, trailing into the sky. You can only hope no one in Mampang is watching. Ah, uh, that's very bad. That is very bad. I might have to rewind that. Yep. I'm going to use one of my three rewinds. Because he's going to see. Okay, climb down. Yeah, it's, I'm cheating. It's fine. So, here's the thing. I could go up through here. Or I could go down. And I would have been crossed the bridge and over here. I guess I could also go this way too. No, I, I, think, I don't think so. There's this. There's also this. I'm not sure, but I know I'm going to go at least up here. You head down a slight incline. Mampang looms into view once more. It is as though these mountain passes had been carved to ensure no one approaching could forget the Citadel's looming presence. Look ahead. Looking at the path ahead, you see the ground appear to buckle where a sharp rock rim rises out of the ground. Before you lies a deep crater as though an entire mountain peak had been scooped away. You will have to find a way across. 
The moon moves slowly across the dark sky. You climb over the rim of the crater. Then you skid and slide several feet down the rough slope, finally landing on what appears to be a path. Check myself over. You are uninjured, but there is no way back up. A path leads down into the crater here. Another trail leads north to south around the rim. Scorn. The path down into the crater is wider and more beaten down than you might have expected. This is not the main road to Mampang, but this trail must still see some use. You would do well to find somewhere to rest safely. Uh. Okay. This could be wildly different depending on which way we go, because this way is this little house. This way is this house. And this way is whatever this kind of chasm is here. So, I'm going to let you guys choose for the first time. Uh, are we going left, up, or right? If there's a mod that is available, are we going to go left, up, or right? <laughs> I'm seeing. I don't want. I don't want to influence the poll. Yeah, this is left, up, right. Your voice just cracked. It's going to. When you go like this, when you go like this for two hours, I'm, you're gonna get a voice cracker too. That's just the way it is. Somebody just pushed their glasses up and said, well, Jeremiah, that's not what happened. You've only done that kind of voice. You've been speaking normally. You've only done voices for about 26 minutes total. So, you're an idiot. Why is it Squidward? All right, where are we going? And it looks like... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's go! Up! Why are you mocking your audience? I wasn't mocking the audience. I was mocking one person in the audience that I made up to prove a point that doesn't really even matter. Okay, you follow the trail until it becomes lost under thick scrub. In the dark, you can no longer see the path. This is a really bad place to go to sleep. But I kind of have to. You try to lie down and curl up to sleep, but you are too exposed. Anything flying overhead would see you in moments once the sun rises. Better to find a place to sleep in this scrub. You get back up to your feet. Okay, well, I guess I'm going into the scrub. You fight through the scrub that fills the crater basin. In the darkness, you can see little beyond your feet. But there's plenty of cover you could sleep under. Uh, yes. I need health. Bad. Okay, setting down your pack, you try to stretch out despite the cold. At least you've eaten already today, so you don't need to eat again to avoid hunger. So more food will make you stronger. I think I'm going to drink a potion. This heals me more, right? Yeah. Unstoppering a vial of blimberry potion, you gulp down a mouthful. You feel a little better, and all traces of hunger are soon gone. Then you lie back and try to forget your troubles. Green. You wake in the night to see a black shadow slipping into the gloom beside you. You open your arms to gather starlight, and, voice, and a voice laughs quietly. <laughs> Two hands clasp yours and separate them. No need for that, Analanda. 
The shape slips down onto the ground beside you. Make space for him. You make a space for him close by your side. It is a cold night. Here in the shadow of evil. Flank her! Flank her? I near the end of my journey as you near the end of yours. But, Annalander, I fear the outcome. What do you fear? We have traveled a long road together. Soon we must separate. Mm. I am not afraid. I cannot know fear. I am a dead man still alive. An assassin is not permitted to experience mercy. And yet, here I am. Will you murder me in the dark? I am glad of your company. And I of yours. The assassin is close enough to you for you to feel the movement as his powerful body relaxes. Wait, what? Is that, is like air coming out of him? Like... One of us will kill the Archmage. Perhaps. Certainly someone will die. He touches your shoulder briefly. Rest now. And so the night passes, but you know that in the morning he will be gone. <laughs> you fucked up. <laughs> what do you mean? I... You fucked up, you fucked up. What do you mean? You didn't, you, you, we wanted to kiss him. I don't know if that's an option. Rewind. <laughs> we, uh, we don't, what, what? Rewind to flanker, rewind to flanker. Franker, uh, uh, Frank, Franker. Oh yeah, don't worry. Me and Franker, we'll uh, we'll see. That's not the last time you're gonna see Flanker. Rewind. Wait, hold on. Is, is are you actually telling me to do this? Is this is how it works. I'm curious. Okay. Is there actually a romance option? Okay. Flanker? What do you fear? Okay, I am not afraid. Okay. I'm glad for your company. Can I ask you something? Anything. Will we survive this, do you think? Is there someone waiting for you back home? No one. I am a ghost walking after all. After this, I may go where I wish. Wherever you are invited. Who would make a dark ghost welcome? But as Flanker speaks, he breathes softly into the dark, very much alive. I just got full health. And so the night passes, but you know that in the morning he will be gone. I have 20 HP now. Holy shit. The sex option full healed me. But we don't know what that that's what happened. We may have just... Uh, who knows? Sex full heal. <laughs> I just want to hear like a Super Mario mushroom sound right now. Like, okay. Well, that's pretty awesome. I have 20 fucking health. I had four. It is half light when Flanker slips away. You pick yourself to your feet and look around in the daylight. 
A short distance ahead, you spy a large black bundle hanging from a tree. Go look at it. The bundle is long, at least six feet tall and jet black. It sways slightly as it dangles from the branch. As you get closer, you notice a chain running from the bundle to a stake in the ground. You also notice the bundle is somewhat hairy. What? Consulting the constellations above, you bind the spell, and a steady voice begins to speak to you. The bat has a loud wail, loud enough to be heard in the citadel. Be careful! Okay, I'm not fucking with that. The chain bat has not yet stirred. Perhaps you can slip past unnoticed. Yeah. Tightening your pack, you begin to creep past the creature. It sleeps soundly as you pass the tree. Near a tree. But then the creature snorts, distracting you for just a moment, and you step on a branch with a crack. Wait, is this the part of the movie or TV show where we get to step on like five things and we get to hear over the course of a few minutes? Or is, is he just going to get right up immediately? Freeze. You stop frozen to the spot. Hand at the hilt of your assassin sword. The bat's head swivels this way and that. And then its beady eyes come to rest on yours. Charge! Cast spell. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm throwing a grenade. You wind the stars into order around you over the last of your pebbles. The superheated pebble lands right on the bat's nose. It shrieks in pain, distracted and hurt. But... Why did I not blow it up? It didn't blow up. Why was it a dud? It's just really hot? Why did it not explode? Hold on a second. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll keep the same thing going. But I thought I was going to blow up. Well, that didn't work. Okay. Someone replica creature? No. There is a zip, which is teleport. There is zen, which is hover. There's also, yeah, this is zap. Let me, let me teleport. I've, I've never used a spell before, ever. I'm going to teleport. You bind the stars into order around you, trusting to luck as the ring of green metal on your finger begins to gleam like a serpent's eye. You close your eyes as your body is wrenched away. You reappear a fair distance away. The bat flies at you, but is halted by the chain. Frustrated, it tugs at its bindings which hold fast. But now that it is unable to attack you, it remembers its mission. It turns to call reinforcements, and you are too far to stop it. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. One more. What, I'm one more. Last one. Okay. Try to creep past. You keep going, brazenly picking your way amongst the rocks, watching for more branches, but it is too late and the damage is done. The beat of leathery wings comes from behind, and then two claws slice at your back. You tumble to the ground, coughing with pain. The bat lifts out of reach as though to, about to fly above the tree. Stop it. You stare at the chain, realizing suddenly that the bat isn't a captive or a guard. It is a lookout, placed to warn the fortress of intruders in the crater. Its high-pitched wail will be heard by the sensitive ears of the birdmen even miles away. You have to stop it before it can call a horde down on you. Yank the chain? 
Throw the chakra. Wait, what else? What is any spells I can do now? That I couldn't do before? No? What? Okay. Zap? Zap might not kill it. I'll try it. Zap. You wind the stars into order around you, building up a charge of electrical energy around your palm. Then you unleash it into the bat's body. The creature jerks and smokes with energy before falling to the earth, a mere dark husk. The trail runs in both directions. I killed it! Oh, it's connected to a chain. Wouldn't that amplify the damage, probably? That makes sense. Metal? All right. Cool. Good. Uh, it is almost time for us to talk about a couple things. I have a few things to talk about. We've got, first of all, we've got uh, Grotto Beast to go over. We also have the BLT to eat. And <clears throat> there's also a piece of merch that's going to drop soon. Uh, unrelated to Grotto Beast. This is a completely different thing. And we can talk about it. Some of you may already have seen it. Oh my god, it's happening! Don't, don't, hold on. <laughs> is it, is it your face mask? No. No, it is not. <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta sell that fucking mask of my face, the, the, the incredibly detailed expense. That's... No. But, let's talk about a couple things. Do you know what today is? Does anybody know what today is? We'll, we'll just do this in order. Do you guys know what today is? August what? August 20... what? August 21st. What is this... What is this the two-year anniversary of? As of literally right now. It's Stir's birthday, obviously. Happy birthday, Stir. But something else, something to do with me. It is the exact two-year anniversary of the dollhouse. And baseball. So, uh, U2's is coming out with two vinyl figures. One is a dollhouse Jerma. And one is a umpire Elbertson Jerma. So... To talk about this for a second, there's a lot of people that came to the channel over the last couple of years that saw, like, clips of Dollhouse. The channel grew a lot since Dollhouse. And I've seen over the years, the last couple of years, like, we had the, the Dollhouse shirts. We had the posters for the Dollhouse. But I feel like a lot of people have approached this channel because of Dollhouse. So, if you've got a Reddit shelf at your house, uh, maybe you'd want these two. I can show them. I'm going to show them. You can take a look. You can get it on your Reddit shelf. <laughs> That's what brought me in. Yeah. So, I, I figured, okay. That, like, makes sense to me. Give people an opportunity to get it if they want. Is it wearable? It is a figurine. They're vinyl figurines. They're, they're, they're toys. Jerma has gotten into toys! <laughs> Alright, let, let me go back. Um... Uh, let me get my... Let me go pee. Let me take a beer B. Because I have Grotto B stuff to talk about, and I have to get the fucking BLT up here. <laughs> They're action figures! <laughs> Show them? I'm, I'm, I, I'm telling you, I'm, I gotta give you the plan. Should I eat the BLT while I do this?
Where is the cat boy figurine? That that I that's not getting sold. All right, bear back. We'll talk about it. Then we'll talk about Grotto Beasts. A lot of stuff to go over. I'll be right back. People saying, did I miss the BLT? No, you didn't. <laughs> I got it right here. <laughs> this thing looks good. It's just a regular BLT. This, okay. People, I don't know what you're expecting. You have to eat it on face cam. I am going to eat this on face cam, but I'm not going to eat it fucking weirdly. Okay. I'm going to just take normal bites. I'm not going to eat this weirdly. I'm going to I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat it in like a side profile. I'm not going to look at the camera either. You understand? <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you the review. But first I have to be I I'm going to jump scare you by the way. I'm about to be on camera. You ready? That's, that scared me and I knew it was happening. Okay. So, here we go. I'm so grainy. There you go. You ready? All right. So, let's hold on. How do you feel? Ready? Umpire Elbertson. Pretty cool. And BLT, let's go. Yeah! That's good. Hold on, hold on. What about Dollhouse Derma? Hmm? What do you think of that? Take a look at this. This shit's real. This is a real fucking toy. Let me open it. Is it crispy? Yeah. Sorry about the wicked grainy footage. BLTs are so good. Just hits every note. Alright, hold on. Here we go. You guys ready for the reveal? Let me get it out. The stuff on the on the package too, if you missing. What does it say? Warning. This is an adult collectible, not a toy. I just may have called it a toy a lot. <laughs> Let me take this out.
So there, there's an image of me from Dollhouse, which is the two-year anniversary of Dollhouse. I don't want to be loud. Okay. Let me get it out of the package. There's a picture of, of me leaning against a door. And that is the image that the people at YouTube's used for this. Let's see. It's like that. Let me get you a good view. It comes with the door. And it does come with the door. There's that one. You can sit. Uh, it could be like a little, maybe like a little bookshelf, a Reddit shelf, bookcase, you know, pretty neat. Let's do the umpire. So I got this one here. Wait, what's on the back? Say this. Can you detach the door? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't believe so. I mean, you probably could if you really, if you really wanted to. I don't know if I, yeah, that might not be covered under warranty. Let's just put it that way. Like there even is one. I don't know, but I don't think that that would that would probably break it. <laughs> warranty. It's not a fucking laptop. Like, what am I talking about? Don't want to be loud. So this is from the umpire, which also was August 18th. So this is kind of the doubling them up a little here. Oh my god, I just almost broke it. Here's this one. You got the the square there, accurate mustache. Got this thing here too. They stand on their own, so they do stand up. There I am. Very, I'm very upset about that last call. Oh yeah. You twos. These are not available right now. These are available on the 28th of August. So next week. Look at that fucking mustache. Look at how good that looks. Look at that accurate mustache that didn't have to get filled in by a professional makeup artist. The box has some cool art stuff on it, too. You can hear. Inside. I don't know if you can see inside. I don't want to break the box. This is the only one I have. This is the only one I have. Here and there. I can see the logo. And then... You saw the back of it before. What's on the inside of the other one? Who's that? There he is. But, uh, if you want to get them, they are available on the 28th. They will go on sale <gasps> on, uh, I believe 12 p.m. Pacific is when it's going to be, uh, uh, available. Oh! Oh, no way. No way. You know what I mean? Like, no fucking way is that going to happen. It's a sandwich! It's a sandwich! Everybody chill. This is really good. You wanna get a good look at this? Okay, so this is a BLT. Let me open up the, the box that the BLT came in. Okay, here we go. As you see here. So yeah, get a look at that. Pretty good. Pretty good tomato ratio there. These are uh, available in your house. You just make it. Dude, that was way too 3D. I eat like a fucking weirdo when I know people. This is why I don't eat on stream. When people are watching me eat, I know that a lot of you can agree with this. When anytime somebody watches me eat, I immediately 
start thinking of every single chew, every single bite, every single, uh, what's up? It's it something on my face, something on my nose. I just want to be like in a, my own private room when I eat. Let's get it. Let's get a taste of that tomato. Fresh. Actually, I'm glad I'm eating this. But yeah, um, those are the u -tuses. It's, uh, I believe, I don't want to get the price wrong, but I think they're $29.99. Show it to him one more time. Look at him. I'm going to get them together. Here you go. There they are. One and two. Hey, what's that? Hey, you're out. I'm not out. I'll just call the bear. No, that was a foul ball. Fuck up. You know, you could do that. They're fighting. No, what about the warranty? No, there, there's no, I don't, I don't think there's a warranty. I don't think there's a warranty. I, I said that just because I was talking just, just nonsense. Oh, yeah. Anyways, let's talk about what that is means. Um, I want to make this pretty clear. Doing something like this. Hey, dude, Dollhouse was two years ago. The umpire, the, uh, the baseball association stream was a year ago. Why are you doing this now? And I think one of the things to really just give you is I think this is probably one of the last pieces of merch I'm ever going to do. Grotto Beasts, we still are thinking of maybe some stuff. We're thinking of it's possible to do some more with Grotto Beasts. But just like Germa merch, like Germa 985 merch, I don't I don't know if I have much more plans to do any more me merch. If that doesn't make any sense. The old man is done. No, I am not. Far from it. I talked a little bit in pre-stream today and in the Discord. But we don't have to get too far into it. It's just the, the one thing is... It's kind of like... I don't know, memorabilia for me at some point too. It's like, hey, the dollhouse stream. That's like one of my favorite things I've ever done. The baseball stream is one of my favorite things I've ever done. And... I just, I don't know, it's a nice way to, I think, to solidify that it existed for me, uh, as well as, you know, obviously the stream's existing, but I, these can go on my, you know, jokingly, these can go on my Reddit shelf, and I can, like, look at them and just be like, oh yeah, that was, I, that was a thing that I did. But, personal merch, this is probably one of the, one of the last ones. And I did say Grotto Beast, because we we're going to talk about Grotto Beast. Because I want to show you a couple of really interesting things, too. But again, August 28th, those are going to go on sale. 12 p.m. Pacific. I believe they're only going to be available for a limited time. This is not going to be like Grotto Beast, where it's like a pre-sale. And then, like, we, we do another thing and another thing, and you can still buy it. I'm pretty sure these are only going to be available for a, couple, a few weeks. So, as of August 28th, you'll have all through pretty much most of September... But anyways, really cool. Dude, talk faster. I want to show you something else. So Grotto Beast Tabletop Simulator, the digital version, is something we've been kind of talking about, working on. Those of you that have been following that project, the, the physical version was a great success. It's, I'm really happy with it. All the core team is really happy with it. Um, barring a few bumps along the road, like we knew it was possible. I want to show you now the progress on the digital tabletop simulator mod that will be for free. So this is the first image that you are going to see. Here is the Grotto Beast tabletop simulator mod that is currently in development right now very very soon to come out you will see it soon very soon judging by what the image i'm going to show you today 
This has all of the cards. You can make pretty much any deck you want. There's a lot of interesting scripting that went into this. Uh, here's the table, which is the rumble ring, the wrestling ring. Again, all this is all free. Anybody that wants to play it. We want to have a good way for people to go and actually hang out and play. Versus, um, how the fuck are we going to play a physical card game together? And the, phys the card game portion was something that was built on top of the merch portion, right? Because it was, it was merch. It was supposed to be merch. But we had an awesome game designer. We had an awesome game built on top of it. So here's where you can play it and have it be supported pretty much in perpetuity here. Let's get some more images. There's going to be a deck building portion of this. You'll be able to craft a deck. We have all kinds of plans for this. Get your, you make your, your, your entire deck. But not just deck building and deck crafting. Well, let's get a big view. Look at how cool this is. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? So I told you when I said we were really, I wanted to put some money into it, some time into it, actually have people working on it. Um, I meant it, and we meant that. So it's uh, it's going to be a fun experience. It's not just going to be a card game. There's going to be other stuff here, too. You're probably noticing there's like a treasure chest over there. What's that stuff on the table? What is that cauldron? There's a lot of stuff that we're going to put in. Toys. There's going to be lots of little fun activities. It's just all free. None, none, none of this is going to cost any money at all. You have to own Tabletop Simulator. That's the, that's the only thing you have to have. If you have Tabletop Simulator, any of the patches, any of the updates, any of this, you will have for, for free forever. So there's not going to be a cost to entry for this. So there's the treasure chest. What's in the treasure chest? Well, you'll have to find out. Because we can't just tell you everything. I Ooh, what's that in the co top left corner? You see the end turn button? So this tracks a lot of stuff. The, the devs that have been working on this. I've put a lot of time into it. And the, it's going to be very fleshed out. What I've seen of it so far has been two thumbs up. Gonna have an arcade. Come on, you didn't even see that. This is all work in progress, by the way. This will be... Uh, things are probably gonna change. Things will probably move around a little. But... there, There's like the little toy section, potentially. Little arcade section. Space to move around, walk around. Somebody said, I am so sorry for whatever I did to get timed out. Well, at least you're apologizing for it. <laughs> is this going to be on Steam? This is going to just be a free tabletop simulator mod. You have to own tabletop simulator. Tabletop simulator goes on sale all the time if you don't have it. But what is how much is tabletop right now? Is it it's 20 bucks right now? Tabletop goes on sale at least a few times a year for I uh, sometimes up 10 5 10 bucks usually. I'm seeing some some really interesting comments here about like what to do with this instead of just in Tabletop Simulator. Like I said a couple months ago when we first were really talking about this, let, let's let get this one out first, and then we can figure it out. Yeah, I'll scroll through them again so you can see. Mobile game, Andy. 
I don't think tabletop is even is tabletop simulator on iOS. Well, I I wanted to when we first were talking about doing this. I was like, you know, I I want to be able to have people like walk around and look at stuff and pick up stuff and throw it around and go into the go to the cauldron and look at it and I want it just to be more than just playing the cards. How come you're not playing sorcery? Well, we gotta talk about some stuff. Tabletop also has VR. Oh, that's cool. And again, it's just a tabletop mod. It's not a paid anything. It's just... Uh, the project did really well. And... I would like to see it be supported and have people be able to actually play it and not have to worry about how or where or why or how am I going to do that. If you've got a buddy that wants, you wants to play with you, then you can. And it's all, every, all the cards are here. You do not collect them, you don't earn them, you, they're just available. But that's what I wanted to show today. And again, the U2 stuff, that is uh, the 28th. There's no release date on this yet. This is kind of just like, hey, it's really close. So prepare for a lot of stuff in the GB chat and talking about it and how we're going to uh, release it out there and what the plan is. It's happening very soon. But yeah. We can now go back to me taking another couple of bites of my BLT. I'm gonna eat this off camera. I can't believe I got the fucking sauce on my face. Great. But yeah, thanks you twos for even considering it. Um, thanks all of you for supporting this channel for the fucking decade plus. Um, figured it'd be like kind of a nice little, hey, it's dollhouse stuff. Remember that? <laughs> okay. I'll take one more bite on camera and then I'm going to do the rest off camera. Actually really good. See the toasted bread? You don't, wait, you don't think I had the bread? I don't think the bread is toasted. What are you, what are you on about? Hmm. Hmm. He said, dude, you just, you just Minecraft ate that. You need to add sound effects. You gotta get sound effects on that. You gotta get, do, 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 do. Ow. Why is your camera from 2001? Because I don't care. Oh my god. Okay. Alright. I'm gonna slowly eat the rest of this. Uh, give me one more second while I put this, uh, some of this, these, uh, figurines away. Very exciting stuff! Woo! I'll see you guys in like two minutes. I'll be right back.
I'm being reminded that I put BLT in D tier. Yeah, well, I'm kind of full of shit. I think you've probably figured that out over the years. <laughs> hey, can I take the door off? Oh, I'm gonna, I gotta hiccup because I, I, I got it like two hiccups off stream, but I'm gonna pull this one. Yeah, the, I, the, all jokes aside, I, I, I don't think there's a fucking warranty on these. I don't know. You have to look at the terms. I, I'm not going to say that and be completely wrong. I, it's, a, it's, a, it's an adult figurine. Oh my, I can't laugh like that. God damn it. Okay. <laughs> uh. You can't retire yet, somebody said. We'll talk about that when I need to. Just know, still here, still here. Uh, we're not gonna, we're not talking about that right now. He's going to have to talk. No, we're not talking about that right now. If you really want to know what we talked about in pre-stream, uh, you can go look. But it's not something I really want to bring up right now. Just know that there are plans in the short to medium term to eat another BLT on stream. Okay. <laughs> All right. What are we, uh, where are we going? What are we doing? Looks so good. Look at that. Where are we going? Oh, you're not allowed to retire. Well, that's for me to decide. Okay. Okay. Go to Tomato Town. <laughs> Give me your remembrance. No, that's mine. I get to keep the two-handed lightning sword. Or the offhand orb that gives you 30% resistance to fucking fire. That's mine. You're, you can't have it. Alright, I'm gonna go to the... I'm gonna go in, like, this way. Come here. Can you take a shit in this game? Um, I think you actually might be able to. I could be wrong. That's actually pretty possible. Maybe? Okay. There is an unshakable gloom about this place. A few birds are singing thin and miserable songs. A thin plume of smoke rises to the east. Look at the smoke. From what you can make out, the smoke seems to be rising steadily, but thinly. It is more like a mist than a smoke from a bonfire. You slip onwards through the crater. And you use a neti pot in this game. Um, no? Alright, I want to go to the, I'm going to the smoke. I'm actually glad I ate that BLT. I feel like way better. I hadn't eaten that much today. You break from the trail and head across the loose dirt towards the rising smoke. The air begins to get warm. Sweat trickles down your back as you get closer to what appears to be a crack deep in the earth. Approach the fissure. You make your way carefully to the fissure's edge. It is almost pleasantly warm here, with soft moss underneath your feet. Superheated steam bursts up every few minutes with a hiss. There's something else on the air, too. The sounds of the wind, surely. Not voices. What can I do here? So 
So it's hot. Um, talk all languages. Can I talk to the crater? This is the easy thing to do. Yeah. Always sus. Craft the spell. A calm voice speaks into your thoughts. There's little to fear here. Echoes. Nothing more. I'll prove it to you. Hello! Hello! See? I told you that's all that was here. Okay. The vent is a jagged crack in the earth. The black stone is deeply cut. Strange shapes flicker within the rising jets of steam, seemingly murmuring. But whatever your spell says, you can definitely hear voices. Where are they coming from? Um, hmm. Let's listen. Straining to listen, you make out distinct voices coming from deep inside the vent. It is like standing on a balcony above a room full of whispering people, all crowding for attention at the edge of your hearing. But how can anyone survive down here? There are no creatures near the vent, despite the warmth it provides. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I said... <laughs> Who's there? You call out. The voices become louder in response, crowding over each other. But they're speaking a language you do not recognize. Huh. But there's nothing here. Echoes. Can I talk on languages? A sleepiness. Can I understand if I put this on? Pulling out the green wig, you put it on and cast the spell. The voices from the crater transform into a cacophony of overlapping curses, wails, and complaints. They're confused. Many of them hardly make sense. Okay. Let me see. I'm going to speak to them. You greet the voices and they respond with surprise. Green shadows flicker near the vent. You can hear us? Can you see us as well? Do we exist? Uh, they do exist. Yes, you lie. The tension eases, but many still swirl and cry. Who are you? We are the dead of Agbad. We lived in a village here. It is lost. A village here? The earth was not cracked when the village was built. How did you die? The earth opened. Every house was lost into the fire. This vent is all that is left. And we are trapped. The rocks pressing and heat burning. Hey! I still feel it on my skin. Can I aid you? How can one aid the dead? Put out the fire! Are you not the Annalander? Who's that? Uh, should I say yes? <laughs> I'm gonna say it. I am the Annalander, you declare. The Great One. The one who was to come, our savior, our hope. It is too late for you. You are dead. Rivers of death run under the citadel beyond. The people within are trapped in their lives as grain in the Archmage's mill. Oh, break the spell, break him. We will rise. How can I reach him? 
He hides in his tower. He hides from us, from the dead, from death. But his tower door has a key. Something rolls up from the vent and rests by your foot. You pick it up. It's a vial of water that sparkles with light. Do not drop it. It is blessed by Karth himself. Kick, I don't want this shit. Kick it back into the vent. <laughs> you dead or yet live. You lifted up a vial of holy water. Powerful, certainly, but how will it open the door of the Archmage's tower? The spell begins to fade. You take the wig from your head, and their words become meaningless sounds once more. The steam hisses up and then settles on the nearby moss like dew. Hold the vial up to the light. You lift the vial to the light, and for a moment you seem to see laughing faces of a cruel god in the shimmers of light. Then it is gone. I don't have a god right now. I'm currently godless. There's no god here. Um... Why would I use this right now, though? I don't think I want to do anything. Okay, as you turn, you hear something approaching you from behind. A voice murmurs in your ear. Huh. There you are. Then you feel the definite presence of a hand resting across your back. What is going on? You sit up sharply to find a glowing presence holding a curved dagger that it has been stroking up and down your back. It is a death wraith, leering at you from under its death mask. In one bony hand, it holds something up. Something short and white and stubby. I have been looking for you. I have developed a taste for you, you see. It opens its jaw, revealing a terrible black void, and it delicately pops the thing into its mouth. Wield my magic chain. Thinking, whoa. What? Why do I have such a little bar? I can't do this. I actually might be able to do it. Mm, that's bad. He just did two old blasts at 4.7? That's kind of annoying. Oh, okay. Warm air seems to cool, but you seize the moment to strike. You lash the death wraith with your length of chain. You cut across its cruel blade, and the wraith moves between the boulders. It does not bleed, but it seems to flicker. It leans forward with crooked hands. Your heart will be mine. It will stop. Um, I, I had to do that. I'm in so much trouble. I'm in a lot of trouble. I can't. I'm, I can't. Okay, you stumble and fall. The wraith grins its bony teeth. Okay, so do you think I can do it now? Like 1.7? No. Shit. Oh, come on. Uh, this is- I'm dead. That's a loss. Oh, shit. I gotta do this again. Okay, so how do I beat the Wraith? Just picking the same things I already did. 
Um, can I aid you? Put out the fire. Okay, I am the Anilander. Is it, is it too late for you? How can I reach him? The door has a key. Uh, this is apparently... This holy water is a key. Hold it up. Take a look. Okay. That's it. Make a move. Here we are. Okay. Turn around. Alright. I've developed a taste for you, you see. Okay, puts the thing in his mouth. What was that? You didn't recognize it? <laughs> Figures. <laughs> fingers! The empty stub on your hand throbs where you lost your finger. Uh... Well, that's weird. Wait, could I cause fear with the face mask? I'm afraid that's not going to do anything. It's a wraith. Oh, it's not going to work. Shield. Dim is stupid. Wait, can I make him stupid? You craft the spell, but it seems to have no effect on the Death Wraith. Perhaps it has no mind to muddle. Where did you get that finger? Dug it out of a hillside in the dirt. I've been following you ever since. <laughs> My darling. Give it back. Oh, it's no use to you now. Besides, I've come to ask you for another. How am I going to beat this? This is impossible. How am I supposed to beat this? Okay, I don't... I have to get either really lucky or... Maybe like a defense thing? Uh, I don't think I can physically win this fight. I mean, that's alright, but I, I, my stamina is so low. I can't go over two, no matter what. I have to, I have to defend until, until he does like a 10.0. I guess I could try. No, it's gonna the same thing's gonna happen. Oh, come on! Okay, that's my chance. Stop! Okay, just, just kill me because I'm, I, oh my god. So I think I just defend two times in a row. Defend two times in a row. I'm gonna try it again. Okay, so defend. Bend again. So now, you steady your chain. The death wraith wails and sings. It slashes its blade backwards and forwards. You parry in a flash. I, I, you can't have any more in the tank. There we go. Okay. Try to do it again. 1.0, right? Oh. I think I just blew it. No, I wouldn't be able to do it here either. I will come for your blood. I will, okay. Good, 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 good. Okay, I just have to do that two more times. 
Should I go for a tiny one? You think I should go for like a little one or just defend? Shit. I'm going to have to defend again. Okay. I think, is this the opportunity here to get good? Okay, just one more. One more and I got it. Should I go again? That was a bad move. Oh, I blew it big time. I blew it big time. I wouldn't, I can't. I have to defend again. Now I might be able to get it with one health. Let's see. 1.7. Yes! You power at the wraith. With a final strike, the creature wails and moans, seeming to vanish in on itself. The air is suddenly a little warmer. One health left. You pant breathlessly, still shivering from the creature's terrible, chewing smile. The air cools as you move away from the vent. What's the new clue? Oh, the door, the door, the door. Okay, well, that was disastrous, but we're okay. Could have been way worse. Do I have... What? You make your way around to the front of the low building. The air moves a little around you. Still icy, but fresh. Look at it. The wind washes through the upper story, and gripweed and yellow bright spark peer out from the shattered windows. The building was perhaps once an inn, perhaps a trading post, perhaps a place for guides to welcome newcomers to the great fortress beyond. Now it has crumbled to half its state. Pick the bright spark. You pluck a sprig of bright spark it has bright yellow flowers, but it is completely useless as most wild plants are. So quickly you toss it aside. I can't use it for anything? This is dangerous. I probably shouldn't go in here, but I'm gonna. I don't remember what happens in here. Okay, let's go in. You enter the crumbling building. It is missing its roof, so you are exposed to the sky. Search the building. With great care, you search the rest of the room, but find nothing of interest. The building is quite empty, but carved on one wall is what appears to be a scratched message. Read it. You read over the message. Third, that Robin doors is invisible. Curious. The third spell that Open the Throbin doors is the spell of invisibility. The third spell is the spell of invisibility. Very cool. You take a moment to rest, admiring the sky, but you cannot wait here forever. You must keep moving. Then there's nothing more to find. You slip outside of the age building and back into the light. High performance IQ. I'm personally uh, timing you out for one second. Actually, no, no, no. I think that was a compliment. Never mind. You can stay. You step back out onto the trail and look around once more. Pass lead in several directions. Let me take a look. So this is going right up kind of Main Street here. Leading us here. It's also going north this way, maybe across the rocks. I think I'm just going to go up. Let's go up the road. A few clouds scud across the sky. The trail passes a deep crack in the rock extends southwards, growing deeper and wider. There's no way across the fissure, but the path leads in either direction past it. 
His toupee is strangling his brain. You ever put a hat on and you feel like that's actually happening? A hat has to be fitted just right for me, or I either look like I'm five years old, or I, I feel like my head's gonna explode. I'm so, that's so bad getting hats that fit. They never fit correctly for me. Okay, you make your way up the curved, dusty rim of the crater, and open pass leads forward and up. Skyline is suddenly dominated by the looming specter of Mampang. As the morning moves on, the wind begins to rise. Look at the citadel. Spellbound by its presence, your eyes follow the lines of the citadel's walls. Gnarled spires twist upwards towards the sky, as if in agonized prayers to the heavens. Sharp angles and jagged points protrude everywhere. Demonic gargoyles line the outside walls. Look away. You try to look away, but you cannot. It is as though the towers have gripped your eyes. The sight would be enough to break the courage of any brave soldier, and its effect on you is much the same. You feel a knot of fear bury itself in your stomach, where you cannot shake it. Despite shivering at the sight of the citadel, you feel yourself compelled to step forward. All right, here we go. Here we go, into Mampang. You clamber up the far slope of the crater until you are on the main road once more. Look down the pass. There are most likely guards stationed with a view over the pass. This is the only route into the citadel and is certain to be guarded. Then suddenly you feel a wave of nausea. The ground beneath you shifts, the sun slides sideways. Oh boy. You open your arms to cast a spell when you fall. The world rushes past you, further than it should. You hear a woman's voice singing gently above the sound of lapping waves. What magic is this? Back in Shuman, Shumantati Hills. Waves lull and wash towards the shore. Lapping water. You lie on a bed of stones, looking up at the bright sunlight. Where am I? This is not High Zaman. A feeling of dread creeps over you. What kind of trap is this? How far have you traveled? You open your arms to gather the stars to you. Stay your hands. You will not need protection here. Look for the speaker. You turn this way and that, looking for the speaker, but seeing nothing but the washing water and spray. Who are you? You call. I have many names, but none truly describe who I am. The sea washes at your boots as though inviting you to step forward. <laughs> am I dreaming? A gentle wind tugs at your coat. As you shiver, you realize this is no dream. You are standing on the shore of the Kakabad Sea, barely half day's walk from Annaland. This is my this is my hometown right here. This is like this is where I, this is where I came from. This is part one. Those of you that are curious, this is sorcery one. So we're back here. You crunch towards the shore. In the glinting water, a boat slowly rocks to and fro. And in the boat sits a woman with a loom. Why did you bring me here? You ask. We have walked a long road together. Perhaps you do not know it. But that road is almost at its end. I bring you here to deliver a warning. I am Libra, goddess of justice. And our long road together has almost reached its end. I have kept you safe many times, saved you, but I can do no more. We have never met. You have never aided me. You reply. You do not understand, but you will soon enough. When you enter Mampang, you will understand. 
The walls around that citadel are more than those of physical stone. It is a cursed place, guarded by sigils and long knives. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't. I will explain, Annalander. For as long as you have walked, I have walked beside you. I have granted you waking dreams, dreams of your future, dreams from which you wake to walk a different way. I... I... Waking dreams. The kind that seem... Huh, real. <laughs> reset, reset. Let me take the new take, new take. Take two, take two. Waking dreams. The goddess continues. The kind that seem... Real. Until they disappear as though they had never been. She shoots the shuttle across her loom once more. But no more. Once inside the walls of Manpeng, your future will become precious once again. The word strikes a knell of fear in your heart. Wait, I... I... I, 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 I grow tired of riddles. A weave can be made, and then unmade, and made again in different fashion. The final garment does not know how many times it was stitched. So it has been with your journey. <laughs> or perhaps you consider yourself to be simply have been lucky to have survived so far. A large wave strikes the shore, and as it drains, the boat tilts and begins to drift away. You realize, although this woman is very intelligent and maybe a god, she has a really, really strange, off putting laugh. The woman makes no move to stop, merely continuing to weave. Wait! How can I leave this place? Oh. She's gone. The thought of the long journey back to Mampang begins to sink into your mind. I'm going to the cave. You step away from the water towards the mouth of a dim cave. Inside, the stone drips salty tears. These tunnels must be flooded at high tide. Gideon Offnir, the all-knowing, is just Santa from the Christmas M&M's commercial. I don't get it. I don't get it. Okay, let's uh look around the cave. The cave walls are jagged and irregular, formed by lashing waves and shifting rocks of a thousand years. Here and there, crystal seams wink from deep within the frozen stone folds. Let's go deeper. You push deeper into the cave, climbing over fallen stones. I'm so sorry. There's one person in chat that's going to make me redo this line like five times until I get it the way that they want it, so I'm going to just get in front of this. You push deeper into the cave, climbing over fallen stones. The stones follow the line of the deepest darkness up into the towering cliffside. Somewhere overhead are the low hills around Cantapani, and a short distance from that is where your home is. You climb higher still, upwards into the rock. And something in the distance begins to roar and moan. You are not alone in the darkness. You can't cast any spells here. You open your arms to cast a spell as a great wind begins to rush through the tunnel, gathering in strength and force as it tries to push you back. Your arms are pushed apart and their power unbinds before it can form. You are falling. As you begin to fall, the stars reach down to catch you. You are back on the edge of the pass. Was that real? A taste in my mouth. There is a taste of salt in your mouth, but nothing more. You shake the vision away and look around yourself once more. I'm going to rest. Looking at the pass ahead, it would be best to try and cross under cover of darkness. You settle down to wait. The sun disappears behind the tall mountains, and a few stars appear between the peaks. <laughs> okay. You get to your feet once more, night is settled around you, you creep forwards into the narrow rock pass. This is the only corridor to Mampang. There is no other way. 
the past. You ever seen Arrested Development? Yeah. Long time ago. I thought it was good. I liked it a lot. They did that uh, like 10 years later season, right? I thought that was all right. I, I prefer the original, obviously. I think everybody probably does. You make your way slowly forward as the narrow walls close in on either side. The sun disappears. Okay. Look, look ahead. In the darkness, you can make out little but the slight curve of the road and the mountain slopes that cut out the sky on either side. Stop and listen. You still your breath and listen for any movement, but only hear the wind whistling through the pass. I'm going to climb the rocks. You grasp the rocks and try to climb, but it is too tiring. You only manage to climb up a few feet before slipping back down. The pass lies open. There are no obvious traps, and there are no ways around. Okay. The only way is forwards. You move cautiously along the shadowy pass. It is barely wide enough for two horses to ride. But the walls on either side loom high and threatening. Starlight pulls around you. There is magic here. Peer upwards. Looking upwards, you see the cliff edges look smoother somehow, as though loose rocks have been moved away from the cliff edge. What can I do here? Hey, can you give me some motivation to start my programming homework? Yeah. Go do it. Alright, I think we've solved that. Did somebody say that guy said that an hour ago? Did I read that wrong? Wait, can I just teleport? I think I want to teleport into the castle. Alright, I'm either going to try teleporting or... That's cheating. Is it though? Or does it make a smelly smell? Yeah. You grab your nose plugs and stick them into your nostrils before casting the spell. A terrible odor begins to blossom from your sleeves in a choking cloud. All it accomplishes, though, is filling up the pass with a noxious stench. No guards tumble from high perches, coughing and choking. Well, I definitely can do that up there. I'm going. 100%. I can do that in front of the gate. You pass, you pace silently along the narrow path. Perhaps no one is expecting you after all. I'm definitely going to do like a big, just like stinky move up here. Can somebody please explain the starlight thing to me? Just link me the wiki page. I mean, there, I don't think there even is anything to even know. The end of the pass is almost in sight. It is very dark down here. The night sky, a thin strip of blue above. Glancing up, you see a dancing light a short distance ahead. Guards. They are above you, staring down into the pass and the cliff tops. A small fire crackles behind them, but the light does not reach the bottom of the pass. Okay, sneak forward. You crouch in the heavy nighttime shadows and sneak along. A lone guard stands above, but does not see you. You leave the guards behind as you reach the end of the pass. Oh, coming here at night, I think, solves this problem. You follow the path between sharp peaks. Moonlight covers everything. And then the pass opens and provides you with your first clear view of the Citadel's gate. After 33 days of walking and hardship, you have arrived. Mampang. There it is. Bones, rocks, stones, death, dried blood, spirits, echoing wails, agony. Good luck. The dread citadel seems to be at peace. There are no patrols of birdmen, no marching guards on the walls. 
They're not expecting your arrival in the least. It seems you have covered your approach flawlessly. Stars turn in the empty air above you. Actually made it for the first time ever. The first time ever playing this game, which I've played through it at least three or four times. Getting here without being... Uh, like they know, they, they know I was coming every other time I played it. So I have no idea what, it, what this even happens here. Because last time I played it, I didn't do this. Before that, I didn't do it either. You have to kill all seven serpents. And I think you have to do all the 100% Kare too, don't you? Okay. Um, Maybe I should just sleep here. Is that a stupid move? Because I need health. Although, if I wake up in the morning, I can't really sneak around, though. Hold on. Hmm. I'm just gonna do it. Alright, there seems to be nothing but to do but wait. You find a corner of the road and settle down to sleep. Laying your pack down, you try to rest despite the wind. You do not need to eat any more today. You get comfortable and rest. All right, so a Libra apparently was telling us, like, I am in your dreams, right? The remainder of the night is kept busy with vivid dreams. You are curled up on a bed of straw and bones. A bird made is carefully plucking grit from your skin and nuzzling you with its cruel hooked beak. You are safe, warm. She feeds you with still living rabbit. A pair of rich black eyes are fixed on you. A figure in shadow purrs your name. The voice is rich, beautiful, and compelling. Aliana or Flanker? Flanker? I am here for you. I will take your hand. Flanker murmurs softly in return. And all the while, you hear distant laughter from the east. You ate some provisions, met Libra, the goddess of justice, and the long peace. The Archmage remains unaware of you. Okay. You wake to the rumble of cartwheels along the road and pick yourself to your feet. The wide gates are open but surrounded by guards. Scores of merchants cluster around the end of the road. People. People. You take a moment to drink in the sight. Manpang's walls are towering, and they march away on either side, guard turrets jutting against the dark blue sky. The fortress is the size of a small city, and somewhere inside is the crown of kings. Look for ways in. You scan the area for entry points. The main gate, the side entrance, the road. The main gate. A short, well-paved road leads right up to the main gate. It is bound in strips of iron and taller than most trees. Carts approach the gate in orderly fashion. Most are searched, emptied, and turned quickly around. A few are allowed into the yard. Guards armed with bows stand ready to cut down any unwelcome visitors. The side entrance. Following the wall with your eyes, you see a path following the stone wall of the keep westwards. There may be another entrance that way. Or the road. Finally, away to the east, the road from the gate disappears off towards distant lands. Heading that way would mean leaving the citadel behind. Time to make your choice. Watch the cards. Did I do... I feel like I may, I may have done this last time. You watch the cards carefully. Each is laden with goods. The guards inspect them fairly curiously, patting down their contents. Contents? Contents. Before waving them through. Their contents. Alright, am I hiding in a cart or are we going somewhere else? It's time for a poll. It's time for a poll. Hide in cart or make a move. Because after we pick one of these, I think we're stuck with it. And while you figure that out, I'm going to drink some more of my delicious drink. Good. Did you eat the BLT already? Yes, I did.
eat another one. Are you drinking absinthe? No. <laughs> Why would you just automatically go to absinthe of all the drinks in the world? Oh, I'm making a nice sip of my, of my nice beverage. Is it absinthe? Anytime I've ever heard of absinthe and seen what it looks like, I always feel like it's some weird magical potion from like the 1400s. All right, looks like we're hiding in the cart. It kind of is because it is. Yeah, uh, absinthe just looks like it belongs in Skyrim or something. Okay, let's hide in the cart. You fall in behind a merchant's cart and unnoticed flip up the tarpaulin that covers the back. You have plenty of time to jump inside. The guards are quizzing each merchant and examining their stock as they reach the gate. Uh, let's jump in. There is a crunch as you settle down inside. You've sat on a group of very large eggs. In fact, the whole cart is full of them. The cart rumbles forward. Uh-oh. The cart rumbles slowly down the rough road. Just cast a spell. <laughs> Alright, what can I do in here? Uh... Sap? I could cause depression to, what, the, the driver? Oh, I can make a smelly smell. Uh... What is he? What is this one? Oh, yo. Summon a giant. Will they know it's me, though? If I summon a giant and just say, hey, just, like, jump over the fucking fence or whatever it is, jump over the gate... Okay, hold on. We might need another vote because this is kind of important. Force field. All right, are we going to... Okay, it's either depression, smelly. We can, I can make the cart fast. What would even happen? Would we just barrel through? All right, smell. Uh, what was the last one? Oh, okay, giant, smell, or what was the first one? Depression. Smelly, giant, depression. Giant, smelly, depression. Which one? Yeah, saying it together is sounds sounds kind of weird, right? All right, it's it's gonna be smelly. Smelly's winning by so much. All right, let's do it. There's no way. There's like a there's a, a hundreds more. Rose, I don't think the sorcery council is gonna be pleased anymore. All right, let's do it. I've not really had nose plugs in any of my playthroughs either, so this is kind of fun. Let's see. You grab your nose plugs and stick them into your nostrils before casting the spell. A terrible odor begins to blossom from your sleeves in a choking cloud. The cloud of stench stays trapped under the tarpaulin. Your trap is set. Now you wait. Wait, I just... I just did this. Oh, no, that's not good. It's underneath me. I've got it trapped with me. The cart trundles forward, then stops again. You hear a guard's boots crunching near. What have you got? <clears throat> the merchant's voice is reedy. Basilisk eggs, sir. For the Archmage's table, I am told. Wait. 
You wait in your stench-filled cart with literally bated breath. Jet show! Hmm, let me have a look. Corner of the tarpaulin flips, letting in a little light and letting out the smell. The guard staggers back, coughing and choking. What by <coughs> great nipples? <coughs> Basilisk eggs, the merchant replies as if talking to a child. They smell terrible when they go bad. Uh, I'm gonna wait. You wait in tense silence. Fine. <laughs> Get on with you, but don't open that top again. The cart rattles forward to the gate of Mampang, and then inside. Yeah, we did it. Didn't alert anything. Finally, for the first time ever. There's a thundering echo for a moment as the cart passes through the tight doorway. Then it emerges into the relative quiet of the Mampang's main yard. You slip out of the cart into the yard. I can't believe that worked. The shadow of Mampang falls over you like a cloak. It is as though the sun itself has dimmed, and you feel suddenly more cold and alone than ever before. But you have no choice but to continue. A voice in your head whispers, Good luck, before fading into the murmur of waves. You've entered the citadel of Mampang. Here no decision can be rewound. Uh-oh. Jesus! <laughs> that was really loud. <laughs> and I, I forgot it happens, like, right there, too. The early morning sun makes the air glow. It is immediately clear. This was once a grand entranceway. The remains of tall statues like those on the southern shore of Lake... You know the one. Line the road on either side, but their welcoming expressions have worn smooth, and their bodies have sheared. Count the statues. There are four statues on one side of the path and four in the other. Eight. Look at them. Each stands or stood twice your height, and their arms are all outstretched at different angles and orientations. They're clearly in the act of crafting magic. But which spell is each casting is all but impossible to tell. Many have lost their arms and many more of their fingers and most of their pursed, whispering mouths have crumbled to powder. Approach a statue. The statue nearest to the gate is reasonably intact. Going over to it, you make out a portion of a ruined inscription at its base. D.O. The statue opposite also has a carving at its base. Read the carving opposite. You cross to the other side of the path and squat down, making out the letters O-T. So are they, are they uh, countering each other? So that, that's dark and hot? I think we already knew that. The next statue along from the gate is broken at the waist and carved with F-A at its base. It stands opposite another. Was carving reads okay. Uh, I think that's fall, and then uh, walk. W O K. I think we already knew that too. Look for more. You search the other statues for any more readable carvings, but one is missing entirely. Another two have been firmly destroyed, leaving only the last statue in line, which stands tall, arms raised upwards. It holds a stone vial upended in one fist and has a skull beneath its foot. Look opposite. Opposite the statue is nothing but an empty plinth. Carved at its foot are three characters overgrown with moss. Hmm. Clear the moss away. You pull the clumps of moss free to reveal the name of the spell. Zed. You cannot hold back a shiver. This is truly the fortress of sorcerers. A place where the weirdest spell of all is not hidden away, but displayed in the main yard. 
perhaps someone here even knows what this spell does. You hurry away from the statues, feeling as though they are watching you. The, the weirdest spell, yeah. This is a weird spell. The center of the yard. You stride further into the bustling yard. The air stirs a little, still cold but fresh. The square is busy with traders and their porters, carting goods from the gate to the high inner wall, where a rack of pulleys and ropes is in constant operation. Strangely, there is no door in the wall into the city. That's weird. Look around. Doors are set into the walls on either side of the yard. To the east, rich smells come from a noisy kitchen. To the west are a series of rooms through which guards occasionally walk. Watch the pulleys. You watch the crews on top of the tall wall working the pulleys on top of the wall, transferring goods into the city inside. Perhaps there is a way to use them, but you cannot see one. There are scores of people working on every rope and nowhere to hide. News reporter. <laughs> All right, I'll do it as a news reporter. Uh, most of the merchants are stopped at the gate, but a few are allowed to drive their carts all the way up to the far wall. Here, their goods are unloaded, strapped to the ropes, and hoisted over the wall, presumably into the Citadel proper. Gold coins are shuttled back again. It seems remarkably elaborate. Let's talk to a merchant. You find a merchant waiting for a free rope. He nods a cautious greeting as you come to stand beside him. What are you trading? Leather, skins, fibers. It's a small enough trade, but it serves me well. What are they used for? Mm, shoes, clothes, I suppose. I don't rightly care. Have you ever been inside Mampang? You ask, watching the curious arrangement of pulleys and ropes. Of course I haven't. <laughs> I'm still here, aren't I? Are you new or something? Of course not. The merchant continues his puzzled stare. It says nothing else. He edges a fraction away from you. <laughs> have you ever seen the... Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Have you ever seen the Archmage? The merchant shakes his head and smiles. No, but I'm told he walks around Mampang once a week in his robes of power and kills anyone who does not bow. Eh, that's just what I heard. A hook descends near the merchant and he nods farewell before settling about, loading his crates onto the hook. You need to find a way through, over or under the wall. Uh, I need food, so I need to go into the kitchen. Kitchen. You said the wrong words with the wrong voice. It's okay. Any opportunity I get to do, like, the like the crabby British guy. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I'm doing this one right here. I'll try to avoid it. I, I, I'm going to do it. Opening the door a crack, you see a riot of activity and heat. Goblins rush between fires and low tables. Carrying heaps of food and pots of water, an enormous hobgoblin stands at the front of the room, shouting orders and waving a cleaver above his head. There might be some useful information to be overheard here. Let's stride right in. You swing open the door, trying to look like you belong. No one pays you any attention. The large hobgoblin burps as he stirs the soup. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna go talk to the hobgoblin. You stroll right up to the hobgoblin by the stove. The head chef. Wait, let's look around here. This is cool. I like it. The head chef looks up to glare at you. You see the kitchen goblins pause, waiting with bated breath. Most have cleavers or knives or some kind, and you are quite considerably outnumbered. No one crawls in here without my permission. <laughs> so tell me fast, why shouldn't I put you in the soup? Ah. Uh... I need some food. The chef waves his cleaver in your face. And you think you just walk in here and ask for some? 
into the kitchen of Throg, the man who serves a thousand hungry gods a day? Indeed. At your calm reply, Throg explodes with fury. He rants, calling you a Philistine and bemoaning those who shackle his brilliance. He's soon red and puffing with the effort. Not, I'm just gonna, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You nod along to his raving, trying to plot your escape. Oh, so you are the new assistant then. Why didn't you say so? You frown, puzzled. You must have nodded at the wrong time. Uh, not again. Uh, -huh. better to make soup than end up in it. Throg is already turning around. I see, Filk. She'll get you started. With that, he turns away. Wait. Should I just go in here? <laughs> Run. Yeah, running, I think, would be the, a bad... Remember, there's no rewinds. So, I... We can't really make more than one decision here. No rewinding. Locked. Let's do this. You make your way around to the counter to where the goblin throg pointed out is trying to lift a bag of potatoes that is almost her size. She collapses under the weight, but scrambles out from under the bag when she sees you. <laughs> she is a gigantic. She is gigantic for a goblin, but still a head shorter than you. Her apron is mostly stains, dirt, and a few threadbare ruffles. I love all of this, all of this up here. It's just this interesting just texture on all of these illustrations. I love it. Okay, uh, help her up. You reach down a hand and pull her up. Gilk! She announces, and you realize with a sickening feeling that she is vainly trying to tidy the thick mound of greasy hair on her head as she speaks. Uh, hello. You greet her and explain that you are the new assistant. Filk is clearly impressed. Finally, we have someone who can reach the top shelf. But before you start, there are a few rules. What rules? First, never annoy Throg. Second, don't drop anything. Third, don't go on the ladder. Throg is very paranoid about that. He's convinced there are spies everywhere trying to steal his recipes. Frankly, I'm surprised he didn't skin you in the moment you walked in. She blushes at some unknown thought. Spies? You ask with some interest. Oh, I don't think they're real. Who would steal old Thunderbow's recipes? He doesn't even use spices. The Arc Mage is just as paranoid about spies are here, but at least he's got a reason to worry. Bilk looks at you sideways and then reaches out a tentative hand to touch yours. <laughs> He's trying really hard to make new voices. All right, I'll let her touch me. You stay still, and her cold, greasy goblin flesh settles on your arm. I'm so glad you're here. And we need to get this soup made. Yes, we feed all the gods in the yards. We are, we're always busy. You chop these vegetables and get it simmering. I need to go grab some roach pig meat. I'll be right back. You can start the cooking, can't you? She turns to go. Uh, of course. Good. It would be nice to have an expert pair of hands around here. She leaves you to your task. Before you is a chopping board, heap of vegetables, onions, turnips, potatoes, and a few purple orbs you don't recognize. You will need a knife. Uh, the knife rack. Don't go into the larder. You go over to the knife rack and pull out a blade. Two goblins across the kitchen are talking in low voices. Archmage. It's a, it's a bit of wood the guards prop against the tower window. <laughs> hmm. Test the knife blade. You test the edge. It is so dull you doubt it will cut butter. If it's a bit of wood, how do you explain the birdman? They're not natural. Mm, sharpen the knife. 
There's a whetstone in the counter. You drag the knife blade back and forth a few times until it is clean. Okay. Go back to the counter. Then you head back over to the counter. Filk steals a quick glance and flashes a crooked smile. You examine the vegetables. Several, several of them are rotten. I'm told bird men are breeding. A third goblin hisses to the first two. I heard they have a nest. Uh, chop them coarsely, finely, or throw out the rotten ones. I think they want them in here. It's a soup, yeah. Throw out the rotten ones, but I feel like that guy's gonna come over and be like, <laughs> "They're for good." Right? He's. I don't know. If, I think. It's, I think it was gonna. I'm not gonna say anything. Of course. You attack the pile carelessly, the polished blade sinking into some of the more rotten vegetables. You end up with a haphazard pile of chunks and goop. Filk walks past, carrying a tray of overbaked breads. Stick them in a pot. Once they boil, no one will care what they look like. She offers a quick, nervous smile, then is gone on another errand across the room. Okay. The pots. Next, you head over to the rack, where a random assortment of pots and pans hang from nasty-looking hooks. Most are dented or cracked and have holes rusted in the bottom. Don't be stupid. Birdmen can't lay eggs. Think how big they'd be. We'd be using them to make our um. This food sucks. We should probably eat those. We would make an omelet with them, wouldn't we? <laughs> yeah. Okay, take the rusty pot. Take the dented pot. Take a new pot. This audiobook sucks. <laughs> hey, well, guess what? It's free! This is a free audiobook. And this is on the recording, too. Uh, you are hearing me say this. This is part of the audiobook. This shit was free, okay? I'm gonna take a break. I'll be right back. I'm gonna drink something. Hold on. Give me a minute. No, don't edit this out. Keep it in. Keep it in. <clears> hmm. <throat> Take the rusty pot, take the dented pot, take a new pot. Uh, I don't know what the right answer here is. Take the dented pot. Uh, okay, yeah. You grab a surface of pot, it's dented and old, but should hold its water. Take it. You heft up your pot and head over to the stove. At the stove. Turning back to the stove, you fill the pot with your mangled vegetables. You add the cleanest water you can find, which isn't very clean, and place it over the fire. The group of goblins are still muttering. You, you should pop through the tunnel and find out, the third goblin says. Oh, except there's no tunnel in the larder, of course. That rumor is totally false. Stir. You stir carefully, allowing yourself to relax for a moment as you take in the aroma. It is an oddly calming moment. But then your reverie is broken by Filk, returning and dumping roach pig meat into the mix. Hot water splashes up. She looks disappointed. Well, it's soup, I suppose. <sighs> we should add some more flavor. There are spices over there. Go look. You fucking wanker. She hurries away once more. The spices are kept in boxes at the back of the room. All the herbs are from Zaman, and you don't recognize a single one. Okay, read the labels. Three labels stand out. Ant powder, 
Melted Curios? Curios? Red Eye Tears. What is Melted Curios? Inside the jar is a solid lump of what looks like black wax. It smells like a sewer. From across the room, Filk waves. Not that one. That one's for blackening the stove. Uh, okay. Take something else. Uh, how about the, uh, the red eye tears? Red eye tears? Really? Inside the jar is a fizzing bright red liquid. A drop on your tongue burns a little, but pleasantly. Take it. Hot sauce. You grab your jar, hoping that what's inside is edible. You take your jar back to Filk. She squints at the label, then smiles. Now that's an interesting choice. <laughs> Empty the jar of spice into the pot, or give the jar to Filk. We're just going to dump the whole thing in. Empty the jar of spice into the pot. You, <laughs> you pour some into the pot, and Filk watches. The soup bubbles and churns. It's the bird man. Somebody else is talking. If the bird men are breeding, does that mean they might rebel? The fourth goblin asks from the nearby group nervously. The Archmage can't control creatures he doesn't make. <laughs> Summoning all of your bile, you spit into the pot with fiendish glee. Bilk grins. Traditional goblin cuisine. I didn't know you were so worldly. <laughs> she spits alongside you. Your two phlegm streaks mingle into one spiraling galaxy of mucus before being lost from view. That is disgusting. Should I taste it? You lift a spoonful and take a taste. It's surprisingly palatable. You stir the broth. Excellent smells rise up from its surface. At Filk's insistence, Grog comes over to sniff the pot. Not bad. What's in it? Roach pig? The finest turnips? Whatever I could find. I mean, these are both true, but this is like, this is accurate. Whatever I could find. Whatever I could find. Throg smacks Filk across the back of the head in reply. <laughs> like, what? Throg takes a spoon and sips carefully. Then he beams with pleasure. Delightful! Oh, come around, you lumps! Hey, come here! Oh, nah. Ow! He gives you a hit on... I don't, you, I don't need to read it. You heard it. I just did it. I, I pantomimed it. Now, this is a chef. He's going places, you hear? Bow. You try to look suitably humble. Someone take this to the mess hall. And you, you get access to the good ingredients. <laughs> Go check out the larder. It's full of real meat. Trying not to think about what he means by real meat. You head towards the larder. We're allowed in. This is big. You open the door and slip into the larder. It is stocked with food that looks actually edible, unlike most of what is piled in the kitchen. But there doesn't seem to be much more to it, except that you were told that somewhere in here is a secret passage into the heart of the fortress. The door behind you opens, and Filk slips in, somewhat breathlessly. I thought I could help. <laughs> hmm. Unlikely. I heard there was a tunnel in here. This affair has gone far enough. I heard there was a tunnel in here. Hmm. This is giving it away. I'm going to say it. I heard there was a tunnel in here. 
tunnel into the fortress? Is it true? I've never heard of a tunnel. But if it was true, why aren't people coming through? Perhaps no one knows. Yeah, oh, they're like rats in there. Rats always know when they're tunnels. Enough talk. <sighs> you turn, ignoring the gobliness once more, but she seems content. She comes to stand beside you. So? What shall we do next? Tap the walls, inspect. There's a lot of other things here. Take some. Ooh, hold on. Take some rations. You were warned on your travels not to eat from the larder of Throg, but was that because it would anger Throg or because the food was somehow tainted? Hmm. Should I try it? Okay. I'll leave it. Leave it, leave it. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. You leave the food on the shelves untouched. Better not to risk it, whatever it might be. So where do you think it is? This tunnel. Uh, what about ingredients? Look on the shelves. You search around the shelves and come across an interesting old cloth bag that rattles when you pick it up. There's probably a fucking snake in here. I'm putting it back. There's no rewind, so I'm actually kind of scared of this. Is there like a rattlesnake in there? I'm gonna. I, I'm, I'm, I can't. I don't know. I don't know. What should I get from here? Is good. What should I get from here? You ask, Filk. What would you like? That doesn't help. Search around the sacks. You move some sacks to get better access to the far wall, but it is solid stone. But as you're pushing them aside, you realize the sacks are stacked very oddly. A patch of floor right next to the teetering stack is bare. Whoever stacked them avoided a single spot. What is it? Have you seen something? Look at the spot. Inspecting carefully, you notice a thin seam running across some floorboards. A less clever observer would never have noticed it. You pick up a nearby fork and pry at the seam. A section of floor pops up on disguised hinges. A trap door! <gasps> Where does it lead? Where does it lead, you ask her? I have no idea. Inside the city? Hmm. Look down the trap door. You peer down into the darkness below the kitchen. A chill breeze is rushing along the tunnel. It must go for some distance. It really is. A tunnel under the wall. Do you want to come? Inside? They're all mad inside the walls. I won't even be able to sleep again knowing that's here. Okay. Bilk is tense as you peer down into the hole. You could turn back or descend below. Well, this is interesting because if we go back, we'll head out this way and head here. But this tunnel, if we don't die a horrible death somehow, we will end up up here and then probably out this way. What do you guys want to do? Secret tunnel or main entrance? Do we, I, I, I mean, do we even need to do a poll? I feel like everyone's gonna say tunnel. Yeah. I don't even, it's gonna be like 90%. Okay. We'll go to another tunnel. You worked for this. Yeah, I did. Okay. You climb downwards into the tunnel, squinting in the dim light. It's narrow, but there doesn't seem to be anyone in it. Are you really going? Bilk whispers from above. Come with me. 
I have to. Why would I stay? Goodbye, Filk. Come with me. She seems to consider your offer for a moment, then she shakes her head. Well, I can't come with you. Look at that tunnel. I won't fit. Isn't there another way? Uh... I need to... I'll come back for you. I'll come back for you. I'll come back for you. You promise, but she shakes her head, not believing. Goodbye. I hope you find whatever it is you're looking for. With that, she closes the trap door over your head. You hear the scrape as a flower bag is shifted on top of it and the distant wail of tears. There's no turning back now. No. Okay, let's go. You slither and slide your way down into the darkness of the tunnel. It is unclear who built this. There are no supports or indications of construction. There seem to be tooth marks in the walls. Scramble onwards. You splash on through the shallow water. The rock walls drip with dank moss. And the smell is stale and fetid. There is no way to tell how much more of this there is to go. Scramble onwards. You splash onwards. The tunnel turns a corner here, rising upwards towards a chink of light. Okay, around the corner. You climb upwards using the rough edge of the tunnel as footholds to ascend. There is a fresh scent from somewhere overhead. Just keep climbing. After some more clambering, you come within sight of a grate in the ceiling. Light filters through. And standing right on top of it are a pair of feet. Uh, let's see. I'm going to listen. You wait a few seconds and are rewarded as the guards above begin to chatter. I'm bored. Silence! Guards don't talk. But what are we guarding? I don't know, but this spot's always been guarded, so we're guarding it. Even if nothing ever happens here. Uh, hold on, cast. What can I do? You need to fart box the room. <laughs> uh, I could just zap. No, that would just, uh, that would cause mayhem. Dumb. How much health do I have? Oh my god. This is, this is going to be a problem. I'm trying to stay undetected. Great illusions. Ooh. Let's do that. Reaching up to the stars, you create the magic, and the bracelet at your wrist begins to glow. You have just a moment in which to choose your illusion. You find the guard's mind nearby, ready to be deceived by an illusion. Swarm of rats? Set the grate on fire or release a poison gas. <laughs> uh, let's do rats. Rats or gas? Yeah, rats. You unleash a swarm of rats that scurry up through the grate and surround the guard's ankles. Crip, quick! We have to get away from here! Come on, quickly, there's rats! You hear their footsteps running away. More light filters down from above now that the guards above have gone. Quick, we have to get out of here. Come, quickly. Are they still there? Okay, so they're gone. So if I press on, can I press on? You push on through the tunnel further underneath Mampang. Oh, no, 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 no. I wanted to, oh, shit. I wanted to pr like, put, like, press on. Oh. Because what, couldn't I have come, like, uh, couldn't I have gone through the grate up here? Like, there's no, there's no rewinding. It's okay. You might not actually have been able to do that. 
You reach the end of the tunnel. A short flight of slick stone steps leads up to a trapdoor in the ceiling. Look at the trapdoor. The trapdoor is set neatly into the rocky ceiling and is closed tight. It looks as though it is, hasn't really been open for a very long time. Can I open it? You scramble quickly upwards, keen to get out of the tunnel as quickly as possible. But the trapdoor, when you reach it, is so firmly locked, it does not even shiver when you shove at it. Uh, this is what DOP is for. We can do it. Should work, right? Yob is an amazing idea. But we will absolutely alert the Archmage that I'm here. You weave the constellations into a pattern around you, but nothing happens. The trapdoor does not even shake. Perhaps it is protected by some magical defense? Or else it is not a door at all. What? You bang on the trapdoor, it doesn't budge, not even slightly. More suspiciously, it barely even booms. Pull at the wood. You pull at the wood of the trapdoor, and after some work with the chopping knife, a strip falls away, revealing smooth rock beneath. It seems this was once a trapdoor, but it has since been filled in. Perhaps with a petrification spell cast onto the wood itself. Oh. There's no way up from the tunnel, it seems. You turn back hopelessly towards the thin light from the grate. What? You return along the tunnel when you hear something growling. It seems your banging has attracted attention. Oh, God. You stop to listen. The sound is all too familiar. It's the yawning growl of a rat bear. The sound is getting closer. Uh, create glue. A jig. Uh... Hot. No zip. Let's do it. You cast the enchantment, pulling out your bamboo flute and starting to play. For a moment, it seems like it is having no effect. The rat bear lashes at you with its tail and claws. But then you notice that the attacks are rhythmic and symmetric. The creature is dancing. Nasty, spiky dancing that would kill anyone who came too close. But dancing nonetheless. It is unclear how this will help you, however. Uh, let's go down the tunnel. You lead the rat bear a short way along the tunnel. It splashes and twists in the water, making strange shapes and movements with its tail. Keep playing, keep playing, keep playing. You keep playing, hoping to wear the creature out. Perhaps it is working. It is hard to tell. You finish your playing and lower the pipe from your lips. The rat bear ceases its dance and looks at you through narrow animal eyes. Then it bows its head, turns, and disappears down the passage into the dark. You stop to recover your breath. But though you are alive, you're still stuck down in the dark. <laughs> I was thinking I could bring him down the hallway and have him uh, attack the door. Okay, I think we have to go giant here. Oh, wait. No, shit. Yeah, let's, let's just do it. Fuck it. Let's just go for it. <laughs> shit. The Archmage is on the toilet right now, and his whole fortress just shook. What the hell was that? What was that? You pull a giant's tooth from your pack and throw it on the ground, casting your spell across it. The tooth erupts into a column of smoke from which a towering giant steps out. The giant does not fit in the tunnel, and once it appears, it fills the tunnel entirely, grumbling. One elbow squashes up against the grate, and it flips open, moments before the giant pops out of existence once more. 
All right, let's get the hell out of here. Hold on, like, look up at it yet. It's just, okay, it's open. Listen, anybody there? Nobody there? Let's go. You jump to try and grab the overhead grate, but you cannot reach it. Probably blow it up there. It was already open? Wait, the, the grate was open already. Oh, goodness. Uh, so just, what? What is Zob? I've never heard of Zob. Gak. I can't float up there. I can't reach it. Try summon another giant. Summon a second giant. Replica creature. Illusion. I just need to get out. Like, how do I get out of here? Looking, you cast the spell, but the grate is already open. Okay, so wait. You settle down to wait. There seems to be nothing else you can do. Hours pass. Then you hear a distant rumbling noise. What about Zen? I think all I had was Zap, right? Did I have, was Zen available? I thought it was just Zap. It was it was Z E N. It wasn't it was it wasn't just Z A. Really? I didn't see uh, Zen. You had I had Zen. Oh, I thought it was just Zap. Okay, well I'm gonna brace myself here. You brace yourself fairly certain what is coming. Water. A high, heavy torrent of water that fills the tunnel you have moments before it strikes. <laughs> you fill your lungs, then the wall of water strikes, thumping hard into your body. The world is turned upside down and you cannot see for rising bubbles. You are only held in place by clinging onto the hole in the ceiling. Thank God I did this first. Pull myself up. As the water rises, you grab onto the open grate and haul yourself upwards. Fighting hard against the current. Keep pulling. You keep pulling, hauling yourself towards the hatch. Things brush past your body, washed away by the current. Climb out. Nice. After more heaving, you manage to pull yourself out through the grate. Once your legs are out of the water, getting free of the tunnel is easier. Of course, all of your water-damageable possessions have been ruined, including the goblin's precious parchment. Oh, great. Thank- wait, is that bad? Thankfully, however, the pages of your spellbook are protected, but all of your soft food has been ruined. That's fantastic. Out of the tunnel. You step out onto the dirt of Mampang and kick the grate shut behind you. You try to shake the water from your cloak. You are in a narrow alley between two large buildings. At the far end, you can see a glimpse of some kind of plaza. The wind picks up as the evening draws on. Soon it'll be dark once more. You slip your way forwards. This is where we ended up. Along the alley. There is barely enough space to walk between the two buildings, which list inwards on both sides. Look at the building. The buildings on both sides are topped by large glass domes. The one on the right larger than that on the left. You slide onwards down the alleyway. Go. The alley widens out a little here as it approaches the square at the end. You are inside the city. Time to explore. Looking around, you are surprised to find that this part of Manpang is more like a city than you expected. There are merchants, laborers, and swaggering guards. Washing hangs from hooks outside the stacked houses. Of course, there are far more wicked glares and knives tucked into belts than even in Kare. Suddenly, you feel hooked fingers catch your arm. Just turn around. You turn around and catch a glimpse of a 
hoary old beggar pulling at you. But then something happens and you lose sight of him. A moment later, the tall buildings of Mampang that you traveled so far to reach have disappeared. You stand in a humid climate. Tall plants lean down on all sides, and a thin, watery sunlight leaks through some kind of glass ceiling, choked with weeds. Libra? But there is no sign of the goddess. The beggar is still here, however, but no longer holding your arm. He stands taller and seems better fed. That's better. Uh, now we can talk more freely. What have you done? Move this elsewhere. Uh, this is a favorite little spot of mine, a forgotten corner of Kari, the Lost Gardens of Briar. Even the gardeners who work here can't remember the way in. It's on all the maps, but no one can find the entrance. My own little fortress. He reaches rather tenderly for a nearby plant and pulls off a graying leaf. Who are you? My name is Throbin. The beggar bows most politely. You notice he wears a circlet of finger bones on his hand, on his head. Some have called me necromancer, but they only mean that death has never stopped my work. Uh, you are dead? Sometimes, not entirely, though I rather think I soon will be. Well, mm, soon can be confusing, of course. Perhaps we should start from the beginning. Robin smiles. Come, let's take a walk, shall we? He begins to saunter between the trees, and you follow. This place is hidden from the Archmage? You observe. Quite so, quite so. Uh, the Archmage would chew a death sponge mushroom and then eat my brains if he had the chance. But for us all, it's best if that doesn't happen. I must return to Mampang. I have a mission. Of great importance, I know, I know, I know. But I must tell you, if you attempt your mission, you will die. Well, I, I, I must take that risk. Perhaps you could try to understand it first, he replies with a slight sigh. <sighs> In Mampang, death can be quite final. The reach of the gods is limited there. There's not always a way out, and you will die. Robin points at a nearby flower. Do you see this one? Purple thornweed. Only grows in one place. The slopes above my home village. It's very nice. It was. Uh, I grew up in the same village as the Archmage, you know. Small place called Kariyama. Kariyama. Maybe you've heard of it. He sweeps away his face hidden from view. This way now. Follow me. Come on. He steps between two plants and disappears. Where is this on the map? Down here in Kari. Uh, this is the second game. This is my favorite of the four games. I would say if I was to do a tier list of sorcery, this would be at S tier. This is by far some of the most fun I've ever had in a video game. I love Kari. There's so much to do here. It's There's so many funny characters, so many wacky scenarios. It's It's just the best. Into the garden. You push your way between the plants and find the beggar waiting. Only now he is no beggar, but a tall, handsome man wearing a long cloak embroidered with runes of power. There you are. I was told to expect you. Where's the old man? Safely in my future. <laughs> Please excuse any confusion. I use these gardens for conversations quite extensively, but I have to space them out. One cannot have things overlapping. Now then, I believe we are, will be, talking about Mampang and your impending death. I, I'm not going to die. Oh, you most certainly are. <laughs> Often, I shouldn't wonder. He points up. The dome is gone, and it is now nighttime. Stars shine overhead. I like these gardens for one reason above all. Can you see what it is? Um, the constellations. A 
Exactly. Look up there. This is one of the only two places in Kare where the stars of the Z spell can be seen. The other is by the north gate, but that spot's rather too busy. What do you know of that spell? The mention of the Z spell makes you stop short. The secret magic, the most powerful knowledge unknown to all. What do you know of that spell, you demand? Zed is the great discovery of the necromancers. A spell powered by and fascinated by death. Some thought it prevented death, but it does not. Quite the opposite. The stars of Zed cause a death of the most significant final kind. What kind of death is that? The true death. The absence. But the secret is too powerful to share openly. Please. He gestures at another path leading between trees as wide as bears that have fallen together to form an arch. After you. Through the arch. You slip under the arch and arrive in a field of bright yellow and purple flowers. Terrifically overgrown. Brambles choke the edges of the path. The man does not follow. Call out. You call out, but hear no response. It seems you are quite alone. High above you, you see two harpies flying past, screaming to each other and pointing. But they are not coming for you. Search the bushes. You search the bushes, but find nothing. There's nothing hiding there. Nothing is waiting for you. Move on. The beggar has abandoned you. It seems you must find the path back to Manpang yourself. Hmm. Onwards. You push forwards through the towering flowers into an area of cracked blue paving and fronded shrubs in a glass pots. To your relief, the beggar is here once more. He looks older than ever. Now you understand. Now you see why you have to die. I do not understand you. I'll tell you all you need to know. The Zed spell is difficult to cast, you see, because you can't cast it at once. You have to cast it at two separate times. Two times, but one casting. Got it? Like left and right hands clasped together. He demonstrates, linking thumbs and flapping his fingers like a butterfly. <laughs> uh, go on. So you cast it then and before. And when both castings are cast, they are the same casting. Two castings at different times cannot be at different times, so the time between disappears. He squashes his butterfly fingers into a single two-handed fist. Time collapses? Beautifully put. The beggar spits a tooth and picks it up to admire. Be valuable, that, one of these days. <laughs> Take the tooth. You reach down for it. Uncouth villain! Oh, now we'd best be getting on. We don't want you coming back here when you finally die. Uh, when I die? Yes. Robin closes his dirt-smudged eyes and concentrates. And slowly the walls of Mampang return. There you are again. <laughs> hey, not a word. Uh, there are spies everywhere. One last thing to do. Draw your sword. Uh, why? You ask suspiciously. It's the sort of thing people do in Mampang. Draw it. Okay. You obediently draw your blade. Robin beams with glee. And then before you can stop him... He runs himself deep onto the blade. For the ghosts of the backlands, I curse you with this. <sighs> he whispers 
and there is fury in his eyes. In the last moments, you see him hurl his arms up, creating some kind of incantation. A terrible force builds around his body, but then seems to only half explode. You are caught at the moment of detonation. The explosion dies away, its force curiously unspent, as though waiting, but you feel stronger for it. You look around, still disoriented. There's no sign of the beggar. The narrow alley mouth opens onto the square. Darkness closes in. You need to rest, especially on an empty stomach. Uh, I'm going to sleep here. The alley isn't a bad place to rest. It's quiet, secluded, and offers plenty of shadow. Removing your pack, you try to settle despite the strange noises that drift through the air. You've eaten nothing today, but you have no provisions and only two vials of blimberry juice. Uh, I'm not going to drink that. Just close my eyes. You close your eyes and let your tiredness overtake you. What is left of the night is restless with visions. You're lying on cool, moist ground underneath a tall, swaying tree. There is a nagging pain in your leg, and you look down to see a sapling growing up through your thigh. Try to move. You try to move away, but you are attached to the ground, as though the roots of the sapling were your own tendons. Through it all, you feel the heat of Annaland burning should your quest fail. Sleep will not heal you if you have not eaten. You ran out of provisions, entered the Citadel of Manpang, and were cursed with the Zed spell. Still unaware. You get click. You get quickly to your feet. You've not been discovered, but you should not wait any longer. Ladies and gentlemen, the mystery of sorcery part four will continue the time. So we made it all the way through here, up to here. There is... Yeah, we're, we're getting there. There's still probably another four to six hours left, at least. It'll probably take another two streams, maybe. Yeah, I know people saying, hey, why did you say this is one of your least favorite uh, games in the series? It's not really my least favorite game in the series, but um, it's definitely the hardest. I think I like them all for different reasons. But I don't really hate, I don't hate this one. It's just, it's, it's, it's a little different, but it's fun. I like it a lot. Four to six hours, really? Yeah, you probably should add a 1 before both of those numbers. It's probably going to take like 10. What's your least favorite? Mm. I mean, technically, it's the same story. It's not... I mean, if you want to think of it like that. But I guess they could... You, they're kind of seasons of a TV show. My favorite season is season 2. Right? That's Kari. Uh, 3 and 1 are in the same space. One is more like a giant tutorial. And then four is the cleanup. And four obviously gets rid of the rewind, which is kind of, it's like, ah, shit, if I make a mistake, it's, uh, I'm stuck with it. But as you see, as we play through this, it, it becomes a little more, it becomes a little different. So. But yeah, I, that is going to be it for tonight. I will see you. I want to play Viewfinder. So next stream will be Viewfinder. Uh, I need to make a tweet for the U2s. What should I tweet? What do you guys think? What's a good tweet? What do you think is a good tweet? How about like... Check it out! You're never going to stream again. I'll, I'll be back in like a few days. Let's see. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm actually, no, let, let, let's, let's shoot for this weekend. That makes sense. Like Saturday, Sunday. Maybe like Friday, Saturday. Just keep an eye on the sus. Uh, in the next day or two, I'll come in and, and change it. Somewhere in the next three or four days. When is Sorcery 4 Part 2? Now that I've actually started it, uh, I don't want to have it just sit here and not be done. So, I would imagine we'll go back to it probably next week. But yeah. The U2s is coming out on August 28th. Grotto Beast, if you weren't here, let me show you this because it is pretty damn cool. Take a look at that. That is the TTS mod. It is almost done. It's almost at a point where people can really play it and get in there and mess around in there. If you didn't see some of the other pictures, let's just go through them pretty quick. It looks really, really cool. I like the ring. I like the, from the commercial. They fight in the ring. You actually play in the ring. Yeah, it looks great. I love it. A lot of horses outside your house. Yeah. What is this exactly? This is Grotto Beasts. But this is a free standalone. Well, that's not true. It's a free mod for Tabletop Simulator had developers working on this and artists working on this for the last month or two, last few, two or three months. And it's going to be available very soon. It has all the Grotto Beast cards in it. It is free. And it's just for anybody that has tabletop to just play it if they want to get in a group and have fun. Once it gets a little closer, I'll probably I'll show it a little more. And you do that in a 1700s accent. Okay. So here we have uh, the Grotto Beast Tournament. The Grotto Beast uh, uh, Wrestling Tournament, as you see. If you peer your eyes over to the left side of the screen, you will see a fire. That fire could be... Who, 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 what could be in that fire? Notice behind that, you see the cauldron, and you see next to that, you see the, uh, the, the frog launcher. That's 1900s. That's close enough. <laughs> Dude, that was a that was a snake oil salesman from like 1880 or like 1890 or something. All right, uh, I'm gonna make a tweet for YouTube's. Uh, it'll be up probably tonight or maybe tomorrow morning. I may, I might see if I might just put it up tomorrow morning. Where more people will see it. But yeah. Take care. See you soon. Thanks for watching. See you guys later this week. Keep an eye on the sus. Uh, I am going to briefly talk about this. Because. I don't, don't want to confuse people. Um, in pre-stream we talked about slowing down this year. And I know back in January. And obviously back in June. I talked about this a little bit too. But. I'm getting close to starting a different kind of period of my online content life. And I want to just briefly talk about it. Because I, I don't, this is not like, hey, everybody, it's like time, time to retire. Um, but soon, I'm going to give you kind of what the plan is going to be. Plan is obviously like once I started working at Offbrand. I, that's going great. I love that. And on a bunch of projects, it's, I've been, Clicking with the, the the colleagues and all the other work. It's been great. But I I really want to focus a lot on YouTube. I want to get back to making original YouTube content. I've talked a bunch of times about, hey, I have a video I'm working on. I want to, hey, this video that I, that I think is going to be really funny. I really want to spend time on that kind of stuff. But just the frequency is going to slow. I... I mean, I'm getting older. I need to start to get my health back in order. Um, I think it's just the right thing to do. 
And I'm imagining like over the next few months, you'll probably see a little bit less streaming content and a little more YouTube stuff. Uh, I, I'm calling it kind of a soft retirement. Because it's, it's not, it's not really, a, it's, I mean, it, it is, but it isn't. Um, I really want to do some more YouTube stuff. Get a little bit further away from streaming. And I, I have said many times that I want to make sure that you guys know when this is happening so you understand, uh, like, the time frame. Back in January of this year, I mentioned it a few times. And I don't want to tell anybody, like, oh, hey, in January, oh, I'm retiring. Like, that's just, I don't even, you can't even call it that. But I'm sticking around. It's just going to change a little bit. I'm going to condense a lot of my, I think, my social presence, like social media presence. Uh, there's obviously, like, I barely even use my Twitter. I don't even know what I even, what to even do with it anymore. But I, I'm, I, I'm happy. I'm really happy. And honestly, I think that's the point. The point is to drop the, maybe a little bit of my own internal pressure I've been putting on myself for the last three or four years. And... Just kind of go back to the way it was a long time ago. I used to just make a YouTube video and I just felt like doing it. And that's kind of the way it is. And and taking a, maybe some of the monetary aspect away from it. Where I, I'm not, I wouldn't, well, I'm not streaming for money. Money. It's more so, I want to do something today. And whatever that is, is what I'm going to do. <laughs> money. Somebody said that's how it should be. It's been amazing. Uh, I've had an incredible last 10 years, 12 years. And it's not over. Uh, I just want to make sure that I telegraph this like back in June, like back in January of this year. Just setting those expectations of I'm going to turn it on when I feel like it, when it's something I think it's fun to do. Working on a bunch of projects at Offbrand. Which is, again, a reiter I'm going to reiterate again, has been going very, very, very well. Um, yeah. Bro's telegraphing it like a Margit attack. <laughs> oh, no, he's turning into stone. No, I'll, 2024 is kind of when this is all going to go into place, really. So... Don't expect very many major changes this year, but it's going to start to be a thing. The sus is going to just kind of be like, hey, maybe at the end of the week, maybe at a, you know, a few days from now. And it's kind of interesting because I gave you a little bit of real talk here. Back before Dollhouse, I was thinking about this before Dollhouse. And then I did Dollhouse. And I was like, holy shit, I want to do it. I want to do like way more of that. I want to do, can I do, how many more of those can I physically do? How do I do that again? Uh, and that reignited a lot of the spark, obviously. Um, and again, let me, I, it's, this is not me telling you that I don't like streaming anymore. I'm just starting to see a different sort of pivot path of Focus a little bit more on YouTube, pull back a little bit on live, and be working at off-brand. Did you say, did you already say this? Yeah, I've said it a few times. I have said this a few times. But something that's important to remember about me kind of repeating myself on this, I want to make sure the most amount of people hear this. And something about doing videos and streaming is I'm talking to you guys right now, but a week from now, there's 9,000 people here. There might be 8,000 different people. So it's kind of, I want to just kind of make sure that people are aware that it's something that's going to be happening over the next three to six months. He hates us. No, that is not the case. And d d seeing, like, the YouTube stuff is, 
I don't know. You kind of look at it and you go, oh shit, okay. This is a... That's like... A, that's a dollhouse. Okay, that's cool. Uh, we get it, we get it. Somebody said, I get it, I get it. We, you need to live your life. Well, I'm not going to stop streaming. I hope that's what you're getting from this. I'm not stopping. It's just changing and slowing down. What could reignite you again? Already happened. It's already happening. Working on shows, working with other content creators. I mean, look at the Rambo show. The Rambo show. That was, it's like that was fucking fun, and got to be a part of that, and I got to help create concepts for it, and and I was like, I acted in it, and it, it was a lot of fun. Don't set him on fire. <laughs> Three or four years ago, I think even before, maybe right after Dollhouse, I think I said that, man, doing that is fun. I would love to be a part of like a creative team doing that. It's hard when you say not stopping and then you use the word retiring. Well, soft retiring. It's... Because uh, here's, I'm not just going to leave. It's like, okay, guys, that's enough. Of, I'm done streaming. See you later. And then I never turn the stream on ever again. That's not going to happen. Just far less. Semi-retired. What about one last job? One last job, Arthur. How about like 50 last jobs, Arthur? <laughs> Why are you tentative about this? Um, because I've been around for a really long time. And I want to make sure I get it right. And I want to make sure it's truly what I really want to do. It's been a very long time. I, I have heard from some of you guys before that you're, you graduated college and you started watching me when you were... Like, 13. It's like, wait, what? Like, no way. It's been a long time. And I just want to make sure I'm doing this right. So, we're going to do it slow. I'm going to make sure I'm doing it the way that I really want to. And I'll see you later this week. That's not changing. Don't worry. What did I say in pre-stream earlier? I said, I said, well, what did I, what did I not do yet? Oh, that's right. The Elden Ring DLC has not come out yet. I, I, I can't leave. I cannot leave. Elden Ring DLC is not out. He said, auction off your channel when you retire. No, I'm not. That's not going to happen. <laughs> but I don't, I don't want to talk in circles about it. Um, but just know that it's something that's floating around in my brain. And YouTube stuff. I want to make some YouTube videos. I want to look. I might even go live on YouTube. I might turn the stream on on YouTube. I don't know. That's really possible. We'll see. I don't know. Maybe I'll just do it one day. I talked in pre-stream about how, like, just doing stuff for no reason that I thought would be funny for a minute. In that soft retirement, I'm just going to do it. YouTube Live. Bald. Oh, no, you said bad. Okay. I thought you were calling me bald. All right, I'll see you guys later. I know, I don't, I every three or four months I've been like, hey, you know, so, uh, slowing down and, uh, you know, uh, chilling out with streams and, uh, let's face cam.
I just want to make sure people know because people pay money to this channel. People pay money to this channel. I want you to be very aware. And stuff like subs, I, I'm not going to encourage that going forward here in the next few months, right? Like, I'm, I'm not going to be like, oh, hey, um, for the subs. Like, no, no I, 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 you should treat it the same way. As, you know, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah, even in, the, what I, in what I'm describing, even if I didn't have partner, I would still just stream when I felt like it. So, don't worry. It's not about the money. It's about streaming. For fun. Batman. All right, I don't, I don't, I don't want to keep talking about it. I don't want to keep making people be like, wait, what the fuck's happening? Is he, what's he's coming? He's, he's gone tomorrow. He's literally retiring tomorrow. No, I will see you guys on Friday or Saturday of this week. See you soon. See you on Friday or Saturday. Goodbye. Take care of yourselves. Call your mother. Call your father. You know what? Just like, have, have a nice like have a nice hour where you're just like lounging around. At some point today, tomorrow, next day. Take care. See you soon.